Solium Infernum. And I just want to play more of this. So that's what I'm streaming today. You know, they did sponsor the YouTube video, so this is sponsored. But yeah, it's going well. I think it's got a good few hundred user reviews on Steam right now, so you can see what uh, what's going on. So there's a lot to do with multiplayer in this game. Uh, I'm more of a single player person myself. Uh, and we could do one of these. This is the campaign. Uh, ish, there's, but there's basically 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. There's 8 um, missions, scenarios. <laughs> uh, there's 8 scenarios, um, which you play them in order. You can see there's difficulties, moderate, 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 challenging, 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 hellish, hellish. Uh, but there's just the general single match, which I think is good because, uh, yes, yes, I, I know what I'm doing. I've played the tutorial. Okay, so, oh, there are, okay, I like, I've never actually created my own, like, game. Like, I played the tutorial and during the demo, there was just sort of a fixed map and then I played a Chronicle mission. I've never actually created a custom map. <laughs> when it says challenging, how challenging are we talking about? Uh, well, let me just... So I played Stations of the Pit, which was moderate. And that was... For someone who has played the game a few times, moderate was somewhat challenging until the end, and then I won pretty handily. So challenging would probably be a fair game, like, in terms of difficulty. So, if you're new to the game, new as in you've only played one or two rounds, uh, one or two rounds, um, challenging will probably be quite challenging. Like, it's not a guaranteed win, right? But if you've, you're experienced, then you'll probably win every challenging round. Hellish will be much harder. Hair looking very Saiyan today. I, I just washed it, so... It just just tends to... It's also a little long, so it gets like that. People keep comparing me to, to pieces of media. <laughs> you know, the, the one I've been getting a lot recently uh, is that my laugh is a Dark Souls laugh. No, no, I clicked the tutorial. I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, hold on. Hold on, I gotta back out. I, I was... You distracted me with your charm. Uh, quit the menu. Okay, single player, single match. So there's Infernal Plains, Dante's Peak, Pit of Despair. So I think I, I've definitely seen Infernal Plains. So I think I just want to look at either Dante's Peak or Pit of Despair. Do, do I want the terrain to go up or do I want the terrain to go down? I think up. I'm feeling volcano today. Map size. People were asking about map size, actually. Um, and I think we were playing mainly on small maps before, which is four to five players. So medium, large. I don't want to go too big today, but I'm going to pick small. So you'll, this is the smallest map available. Players, we can up to... F can we up to six and play on a small map? You can, but let's not. Let's, um... Let's have four players. That's four players. Places of power, many. Some, few. Let's have many. Game length, normal, 50 plus, long, very long, up to 70. Very short. Shortest is 25 turns. You can actually play just 25 turns of this? Okay. I think 40 plus, just a short game, makes sense. Because uh, I played, I think it, I think the Chronicle I played was very long. I think it was going up to 70 turns and that took me two and a half hours, I think. So let's go 50. Let's just do normal. 50 turns. That feels, yeah, 50 should be fine. Okay, continue. Cruise. Okay, so character setup. So there's these, um, the, 
arch fiends. And some things I haven't actually messed around too much with are these equipments. So I've played Astaroth quite a bit. I understand Ast Astaroth. I think I should pick something else. And what kind of character they are is sort of depicted by the stats here. So Astaroth, very military, wrath, destruction, charisma. Lilith, deceit, prophecy, destruction. Andromalius, deceit, destruction, charisma. Mammon, wrath, prophecy, charisma. Look at this charismatic guy. Murmur, wrath, prophecy, destruction. So destruction is like spell casting in terms of that sort of thing. Belial, deceit, prophecy, charisma. Deceit is just so you can do things outside of the norm, uh, outside of the the rules of hell. Like, if you have high enough deceit, you can cast offensive spells even if you're not at war, or you can even send insults and mask it as if it's coming from someone else. So you can have someone else insult someone else and trigger a war between them. <laughs> you can do stuff like that. No. Ursabet, no. wrath, deceit, charisma. So wrath is sort of just military strength. And that's sort of my approach in these sorts of games. Is this turn-based? Yes, it is uh, turn-based. Can we skip to April so you can play Mana Lords? <laughs> We're all waiting for Mana Lords. It's okay. It's coming. It's coming. Um, and then this one. Th this is the last Archfiend they revealed, so I actually don't really know much about Beelzebub. Wrath, Deceit, Destruction. So, Hell's Maw, unique wrath ritual that converts the essence of legions destroyed by Beelzebub into tribute tokens. No. This is the, no. the special no. ability of the Archfiend. Unique diplomatic proposal that allows Ursabet's legions to freely cross an opponent's territory. Oh, that's actually quite handy. With one deceit, one charisma, seek alternate paths of victory. Unlocks Charisma Rituals and Prayer to Dueling Effects. Manipulate Exploit. You know, let's try Ursabet. Now, there's the default equipment, right? Um, but you can change it up. So you can pick, basically, three rings, right? Or you could pick a ring and an amulet, or you could do a crown. Right? So these powers are all sorts of things. Uh, of course, rings are least powerful. Crowns are most powerful. That big guy's giving you the willies. Yeah, the, the, the bug Archfiend is a bit... <laughs> the mouth and appendages in the chest are too much. <laughs> well, technically, we have appendages in the chest. That's our arms. They come out from our chest. <laughs> but not so much the front. More of the side for us. <laughs> It's still the chest. Uh, uh, so, any problem can be solved with more soldiers, Increase uh, can command more soldiers. Uh, prestige earned from Legion combat is multiplied. You know, there's, there's all of these small draw plus one tribute tokens to choose when seeking tribute. So there's going to be so many, you know, hold an additional event card, which I will remember to play today. Add one to ritual strength and performing destruction rituals. All the, these... Controlled places of power gain an additional attachment slot. So, okay. But then there's amulets, which would be more powerful things. Controlled legions receive a bonus to their range attribute equal to their Archfiend's prophecy power level. The range strength gets stronger with your prophecy. Base charisma power level is 2. Start with infernal rank of Mar Marquis. So you just start promoted. Gain plus five additional prestige when an opponent accepts your demand or insult. So depending on your particular playstyle, there's a lot of things you can just mix and match. Crowns are going to be the easiest decision because you just have to pick one, right? So there's your legions. can So all your units have plus one movement points, which is really good. Not so much for your normal troops, but if you get those big siege monsters... They tend to only be able to move one tile. With this, they'll move two. And doubling the speed of giant monsters is actually really good. Cost of purchasing infernal rank is reduced by 50% if you want a quick level up. 
uh, gain an additional order slot. Like, you just start with three orders, which honestly, it's just a good thing, right? Are all the rings just unlocked? They're, they're all unlocked from the start. Um, because this is this does focus quite a bit on multiplayer, so everyone starts on a level playing field. Blood feud can be declared after a single successful vendetta. This is if if you want to win by domination, you pick this. So you do one vendetta, blood feud, kill them, right? So if you want to win by killing everyone, you you should get that one. Uh, places of power generate an additional one prestige per turn. You may select a puppet within the first... Oh, this one. I've heard about this. Crown of the Kingmaker. At the start of the game, you select a puppet within the first 10 turns. And if they win, you win. <laughs> like... Well, if they win via election. You know, not if they win by killing you, obviously. So, if you take the crown of the Kingmaker, you select a puppet who you think will win, and then you try and boost them up as much as possible. But also, they might not win by election. They might kill you, and then you can't win, obviously. Or they might kill everyone and win that way. Um, and, and there's actually a number of ways of winning. So, if it... If they win in a standard election victory, you win instead. They they take second place and then you actually win. <laughs> uh, crown of the power behind the throne if you are the blood vassal of the election winner. Oh, right. So if someone vassalizes you and then they win, then you win instead. So this one, you you let someone conquer you without killing you. Like, they gotta vassalize you. So they could just kill you. It's it's really risky, right? It's not... Like, you think, like, oh, you could just steal an election victory like that. But actually, it, there's so many ways that that doesn't happen. So I think just starting with an additional order slot is a very straightforward good thing. Crown of Alicrity is also a very good thing to just start with. Or the Crown of the Administrator. Like, these three are just very basic good things to have. You don't have to think about them too much. They're good in any situation. Unless you don't have a lot of units. You know, so I guess these two are just places of power generate more prestige or you get an additional order slot, right? It's just it's just good. So, Ursabet starts with this unit. So, I'm more used to um Astaroth's unit, which is pretty strong. Like, I think that uh, uh, Astaroth has the strongest um, starting unit. Ursabet has better Infernal, but zero range. So the range damage is eh, going to be a problem. But okay, I think I'll go with Ursabet with the Crown of Bureaucracy. Random, random, random. Yep, game length normal. Very good. Let's begin. All right, we're jumping into Solium Infernum. The Dark Majesty has vanished. So I know all the basics now, and I know like a lot of the nuances and a lot of the, the mistakes. I've played for quite a number of hours at this point. Okay, so... I want to seek tribute, I want to go to the bazaar, and I likely want to range plus two, melee last, infernal plus four, range plus two. Just a range plus two on my melee last is actually good this time. Melee phase is resolved last, yeah. Is there a way around this? Because see, the the cost is two four. You know, it's just two four. I'm currently playing paying three four two, but I don't think there's a way around it. Yeah, that's fine. Extra tokens being paid helps as well because you know someone else could be bidding on that turn one, and if you've paid more, then you win. Oh, also, just before 
people were complaining that there was no um, there was no screen edge panning toggle. There's now a toggle that was patched in like yesterday or something, so you can turn that off. Because I use WASD to, so I like to disable the the edge pan. Okay, uh, and then this tower pride one four zero. Oh, I never. One four zero. So I take one point of damage. Yeah. So actually, one four zero. This is zero three seven. I definitely want to take this. Wait, I would deal. Four, five, six. How much damage did they, they deal? Three seven. So yeah, I actually want to go last here and hope they attack first because they will deal 7 damage and then I could take it. Yeah, let's try that. And because I'm starting with 3 order slots, it's unlikely the enemy all picked that as well. So it's unlikely he picked... Like, who is this? Who's actually... Murmur. It's unlikely Murmur got the same crown as me, so my third order should basically play after everyone. It's likely this... oh, no, they won't go for that, that's even worse. Yeah, okay, there we go. First turn done. By the way, if you all want to support today's sponsor, uh, just click that link in chat. Oh, this is perfect. Click that link in chat. Um, it's just straight to the Steam page, just to let the sponsor know that you came from me. Uh, Solium Infernum worth looking at, if nothing else, because th there really isn't anything else like this. You may like it, you may not like it, but there's no other 4x right now that's like this. Like, it's it's just got so much stuff, and that's really different. You really like how they're little armies instead of just three or four dudes. Yeah, th that's always a preference, right? Like, some people like the, the symbology used in Civ, where it's like three or four guys in a unit. This one, it looks like an actual army. Ritual successful, what they do? Dark Augury? What's Dark Augury? There's a lot of nuances which I still don't know what it is. So I should just take this now, right? So I'm using my third order slot to my advantage. So I should do five, six, seven, and it's got six hit points. So I should just win and take it. Now you don't have to watch all this. You can you can just click the end turn button and it, it just skips to the next turn. Or the next thing happening. But, you know, at the start of the game, I like to watch it. Three spearmen versus one tank. <laughs> Civ taught you well. <laughs> well, if you're an older school player of Civ, you'll know Settler on Mountain beats tank. Okay, so one of my favorite things about this game is the turn order, right? So there's, like, Regent. Whoever's Regent, their first, their orders play first, and then it's next down the line, next down the line, next down the line. But it's like first order, first order, first order, first order, second order, second order, second order, second order, third order, third order, third order, that, that, that way, you know? So, and then who goes first changes next turn to the next one over, right? So, who goes first is very balanced through the whole game, but considering that, you need to know. Like, I wanted to attack this second, right? I wanted to attack second. So now let's see. Tribute. Yep. yep. Take the tribute. So what is this? What happened to me? Valuable information about Ursabet's powers has been revealed to the Archfiend responsible, Mamon. Oh, so Mamon probably can see my, my stuff. All ongoing rituals are stopped. So you can play this. This is what I keep forgetting. The event cards are in the Sanctum. So the reason why I kept forgetting the event cards is because you actually have... Um, uh, 
a vault thing here, which shows this is all the stuff you have and the stuff you can use, right? And there's uh, prayer tours, there's um, the, what are these things? There's artifacts, there's manuscripts, you know, and you can see your domain. There's legions, prayer tours, places of power, artifacts, manuscripts, vault, ritual table. The event cards are not here. <laughs> So I look here and it's like, yeah, okay, I've done everything I can. But if you go into the Sanctum, event cards are here. And I just never looked at this part of the screen very much. I usually go to the Sanctum and I'm like, okay, powers, rank, you know, okay, maybe do a scheme. But I keep forgetting, like, this is a button. You can play this for a cost. Ah. Uh. The different combat phases remind you of Crusader Kings 2. Yeah, I actually really like the, the combat phases. So how powerful is this? 2-3-3? Three, three? Yeah, 2-3-3. Three, three. So I want to attach this Praetor. This has 9 hit points. If this 2-5-3... So I would deal... 3... This Praetor gives what? Hold on. Um, let me check. Plus two range melee last. Gotta keep that in mind. So this unit is now gonna do melee last. So it will deal three, four, five. So I, if they attack, it would deal only two points of damage. I would deal five. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm doing that. After I attach the Praetor, so we take no damage. Um, and because it doesn't matter, I should just reorder my slots. Actually, I'm kind of blocking the UI a little bit. Let me let me fix this for you. Um, let me just go to my webcam. I can move it over here so I don't block these order oh, I got three order slots now so I gotta go a bit further over <laughs> lock that and also so I don't just crop off like that let me f let me do my back here there we go now I fade off nicely there very nice <laughs> professionalism okay so I'm gonna attack that they can this unit here can only do two damage so there's not much else to do there let me just check the Bazaar, is there anything I want to be bidding on? Feral lunge. No, I don't think I need much. Oh, so where's the volcano? So this is a volcano map. And we're on the smallest map size, so remember that. So does that mean there's more lava tiles around? Lose two hit points at the end of turn. Entering this canton ends movement rate. So it's basically guaranteed two points of damage taken. Okay, so I'm gonna seek tribute, attach a Praetor, and attack this unholy fountain. We now have this, which is giving us plus one prestige a turn. Very good, very good. Pretty solid start, I think. So I have a thing which allows me to walk through other people's tiles. So you're attacking the Unholy Fountain. So you'll just do two damage, right? Because ranged is matched, Infernal is matched. So melee playing last now on my unit is good because a lot of other units from other Archfiends have strong melee. Except for a couple which have like strong Infernal. Dark Augury again. Yeah, people are just looking at my stuff, sure. And then I should move? Yes. And do a hit here. So, we now have two ranged, so we take no damage. I'll deal three, four, five. And then I'll have two hit points left. Which is probably not good because they can do two points of damage and also now someone else is in range as well. So, my best bet here is I attack first on the next turn. Does the lava kill the, the demon horses? It does. 
Okay, so Andromalius is going first, which is... So, who's here? This is Murmur and Mamon. So, Mamon could go before me. Ah, damn it. Best bet is to do that. <sighs> might be good, might be bad. No, I actually need... More of that, yeah. Okay. I might have mistimed that stuff, but sure. Uh, what I can do besides this is... So under the ritual chamber, I have... The photos are preventing it from moving for the rest of the turn. Okay. Sacrifices a friendly legion on Hell's Burning. Okay, no, I don't need that. There's so many spells that can be played. No, I don't need to play that. How much is it to 30 to level up? Okay, I could actually do that next turn. So, instead, what I think I should do is actually do a plot. Seek tribute. See if I get it. My green screen alpha settings are very well tuned. Uh, am I the one that had that video on using two different layers to make the hair look better? No, that that was actually me, yeah. Ah, damn it! I'm, wait, no, it healed one! It healed one! I forgot! This is in my pro tips. Places of power heal one per turn. You only do two damage and it had two health, but it heals up to three. And then it's my turn and I take it. I planned this perfectly. <laughs> Oh, there's my Dark Souls laugh, as people keep saying it is. It's all part of the plan. And I get a second place of power really early on. And th oh, these pl places of power just give you lots of prestige over time. Remember my pro tip, prior means higher. So they probably had an order to attack the place as well, but by the time they get there, well, it's already captured, so they can't attack because we're not at war. This thing's gonna kill itself. <laughs> it just melts into the lava. Okay. Okay, I've now got 35 prestige, so I can rank up. Okay, let's select my tribute first. Let's grab that and... Actually, that... Now, beat one higher level Praetor in duel by bribing the Arbiter. Engage in three battles without taking damage. I can do this. Declare publicly. Yeah. Because I've already done that. Legion promotion, very nice. Plus five infernal, plus one range, plus two melee, plus six maximum HP. Ooh, they're all good. I do want to increase my ranged, but like this place is 8 to 13. That's just too powerful for anything. Like what's the next tree of woe maybe? 305? Three, 305. Three, so actually this is good to have. How strong are other... My direct neighbors don't have strong range. So I think I can go for plus 5 Infernal. And also remember, melee plays last. So Infernal will play second. It'll be ranged Infernal melee. So plusing my Infernal works well with this Praetor. Plus 5 Infernal. Promote. So, and I want to beeline that Tree of War. I'm going to have to walk through the lava and take some damage, but that should be okay. Um, someone else might get there before me, but actually it's... Yeah, cool. Also, this place is 0010, this face in the sand. 
Sand, prophecy, strength plus two, very nice. Um, but oh, I'm so happy I got these two places of power. Uh, so now I also want to go to Sanctum, rank, rank up. Definitely good. And do I want to do anything else? Think seek tribute and place seek tribute on the first step because it doesn't matter. My other orders don't need to go anywhere. Like, this movement doesn't have to go first. So seek tribute in first spot means you get more. Uh, but wait. But if I rank up first, the higher rank will get me better tribute. Oh, I don't know the math on that. So being a higher rank means you get better tribute. Placing the tribute in the first order slot gets you better tribute. I don't know whether you benefit more from ranking up then seeking tribute or seeking tribute first and then ranking up and then I'm gonna do rank up first and then seek tribute and then move. Uh, does that place of power do anything besides giving prestige? Some do things. Um, usually the easy to capture ones they just give prestige. Uh, this one gives you plus one tribute quality but you see how strong it is. Uh, this one gives plus two prophecy strength for prophecy rituals. You know, so uh, what else do we have? Um, that's pandemonium. Uh, this one gives you plus one charisma. This one gives you plus one destruction, but they're the more powerful ones, you know? Okay, but I think this is good. Enter. So these units cannot capture that Palace of Gluttony, but they're gonna run around it to claim access to it. So that one walked there, so this white player can't reach it. They likely wanted to try and get that tile, but they were blocked off. So I know people complain about the AI in this game, but actually it's, it's pretty competent, right? Considering the number of things they can do. Ooh, I'm regent again. So I lost all my prestige because I used that to rank up. But that gives you better everything. So now I can pick like three tribute. I actually don't need a lot of fire. I'm gonna do that. So I'm the regent, rank increase, plans are in motion. Yeah, engage in three battles without taking damage. We can do that. Uh, let me go to the bazaar. Are there any manuscripts I want? Increase a legion's melee attribute. I actually want this. So I'm going to place a bid. And I can't seek manuscripts. I have to level up. If I go to Sanctum and Powers, which one allows you to seek manuscripts? This one. What else does this do? You inspire blatant favoritism while the effect lasts. Oh, if I want to cast that spell. But actually, I think I just want the ability to seek manuscripts. So I'm going to level that up. And I should probably... S Wait, no, no. So I'm bidding on that and I want to keep moving. So moving on to the lava ends movement. So I have to... I should do this. I shouldn't do this and then... Because ne next turn then I'll get stuck on the lava. So I'm going to do this and I'll take two points of damage. And see, even with three order slots, there's so much you can't do. I can't seek for tribute this turn. I'm spending my money, but I can't get more. Okay, I think this is what I'll do. I'll take two points of damage, but I'll take no damage from this Tree of Woe. And I will actually take it in... Wait, I thought I should have three ranged. Oh no, I didn't... I went for the five infernal, not the... Oh, wait, damn. There's another slot here. Let me check Bazaar. Melee plus three. Oh, I will take damage from the Tree of Woe. Oh well, it's fine. 
Uh, this this plan will just sit there. I'll, I'll eventually get that. I don't have to get it now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. I get an event card. Uh, you're the regent. Let's remember to play these. Combat and especially glorious and bloodthirsty with triple the prestige. All ongoing rituals are stopped. You know, I don't really care about either of these, so I might not play it. Combat is especially glorious and bloodthirsty and worth triple prestige for three to six turns. I don't know if you get prestige from actually like just capturing a place of power. Okay, so they couldn't get access to the Palace of Gluttony. Oh, you can walk onto that tile. Oh, they're going for the Tree of Woe, and they can access it next turn. So can I. So I gotta plan my... my attack order here. Okay. I gotta check their strength. Because they will move... they can move before me. I can't force a first move from my side. So let me see. Oh, someone... Wrath of the Tyrant. All Archfiends have suffered a loss of one point in a random power? I had my Charisma decreased by one? Was that the one I was leveling up? <laughs> I leveled up my Charisma and immediately lost it. Okay, so let me just see here. The Tree of Woe is 305, right? This is 253. Um, so, zero, five, six, seven, and it's got eight, no, it's got ten hit points. So they can deal seven damage, right? Two, five, three, which means they'll deal five, wait, no, they can deal five points of damage. They'll take one, they'll deal five, and then they'll take two. So they can deal five points of damage. So... I would want to... I can deal. I would deal... I'll take one. I will deal five. And then I'll deal six. Because melee plays last, remember that. So I'll deal 11 points of damage. So I just want to go after this person. So I will have... This attack. But I'll make sure it plays on the third order slot. So their attack should happen before mine. Because even if they place it on, even if they have a third order slot, they are, they're currently moving before I move, right? Because they are Mamon, yeah. Who's the regent? Oh, Murmur. Yeah, so everyone's moving before me. So I've planned that as best as I can. Um, I should seek tribute. Did I get that manuscript? Feral lunge, three fragment primer and methods. Teleporter legion. Swamps of hell, that's not quite what I want. Uh, did I get that manuscript? I did. Close quarters training to increase a melee attribute. So, I do want to... I still want to do this, but I don't have enough money. So I should probably just seek tribute twice. And then move my unit? That makes sense. Let's go. Hey, so hopefully... So either they attack it first, and they won't capture it. Or they don't attack it first, or they don't attack it at all. And I will capture it in one turn. So I will, I will take this Tree of Woe regardless. Because they can only deal 5 damage, so they're just wasting their, their time here. And then they're going to take two more points of damage. So I get a third place of power. I don't know if anyone else has taken any place of power. So you can walk over these, these pits. 
So now I just take it. I'm having a very good start. So I take one point of damage. Then Infernal plays. And I just... Blast it to hell. Well, you can't blast it to hell. We're in hell. So, just blast it. Very good. Andromalius is the regent. I forgot to play my event card. <laughs> I said I was gonna play it. Oh, well. See, this is what I mean. So, I healed up one point because being next to a uh, place of power. So, next up is that. 087. It's got 12 hit points. Melee plays last. So, if I can kill it in range and infernal, deal 12 points of damage. So, I've, got, I've only got 2 ranged. But then 10 infernal. So, I can do 5 points of damage right now, which is not great. Also, I want to heal up one more point. So I actually just want to move one tile for now. So I'll stay next to the Tree of Woe and I'll heal up. And then I'll go secure the Altar of Abomination until I can... Okay. ...boost my melee by two. So actually, I need that power. I still can't afford it. Damn. Wait, no. I haven't picked my tribute. Uh, what do I actually need? Uh, Sanctum powers. I need three, two, two, two. Three, two, two, two. So I actually just need one soul. So that covers that. And then more tribute. Great. So Sanctum power. Get this again. So I can seek manuscripts. So locked up. My vote will be, be required on something. All right, so then let's also... Yeah, March last, seek more tribute. Okay, so I have three points of power, and I think no one else has captured any other point of power. We're gonna soon own everything. <laughs> it's gonna be great. And then everyone will declare war on us. They keep looking at my stuff. All right, just one step so I can heal back up to full health. Okay, Mammon's Regent, so I'm moving second. Select my tribute. Actually need more of that. Murmur sends a message. And I was told that the language the Archfiends speak in this game, it's not Latin. It's actually a somewhat famous invented language of the language of angels. So that's what they're speaking, which is actually a really nice touch. There we go. I've healed back up. Very nice. So now I can seek manuscripts. It will try to find a matching manuscript. If I can get the manuscript, to increase... Actually, I deal... How much damage? I'll deal... I'll only take two damage, and I deal... Five. If I can get my melee... To be... Two points higher, I could take no damage, and actually... Yes, this. Melee plus three. Inflicted melee damage returns opposing attachments to their owner's vaults. I don't know what that is, but this I definitely want. You know, and I will overbid a little bit in case someone else is bidding on that. So I want that. You are definitely moving there. And I'll seek manuscripts as well. Move last. Ooh, things are coming together. Okay. Th things are synergizing. 
This is what this game is all about. You see how much there is to do, how many things you can do. There's just so much. <laughs> and then they give you two or three order slots. Okay. So I could get a fourth place of power soon. So I actually want to increase my melee strength by two. Because then I just don't take damage, and then I can attack it three times. And I do three battles where I take no damage, and that's my current plot. I'm the regent now, okay. I don't think anyone's competing with me. Oh, no one moved their stuff. Darth of Tribute, so Tribute quality is bad for the next few turns, okay. So, I won the bid, right? Um, let me select my Tribute. Veil of Smoke. Unbreakable stance. Ah, dueling moves. Just take that because it's only a one piece thing. Mamon sends a message. Sure. Uh, I'm the regent. Every archfiend loses 25% of their tribute tokens. Oh, let's pick that one. You know, I'm gonna do this just as a I might not play this but I'm doing that now so I'm playing an event card <laughs> okay um, auction one so I got this sword so this is melee plus three so do I actually want melee plus three because then I would be dealing one two three four five six which is two attacks. But I also... I didn't get the manuscript. I need another manuscript. So I think that's fine. This is going to be two battles where I take no damage. And... Then I just need one more for my plot, right? Uh, check my... Yeah, three battles without taking damage. I'll, I'll get it eventually. This is going to be two. So what I want is artifacts... I want to attach artifact to the enslaved of Ursabet. So that's going to give me plus three melee. Wait, no. I can actually be more efficient with this. I can... Do I want to take more cantons? Because... Let's move... Let's move here, then there. Okay. So I take another Canton. Because owning Cantons actually gives you something. I think if you have enough. Canton count. The number of Hell's Cantons you have claimed as part of your domain. Which I think gives you more prestige per turn. I think that's giving us four prestige per turn. And then another four from Places of Power. So we should be getting eight prestige per turn is my understanding. If that's correct, I should have 35 next turn. Okay. So I'm playing the order, the, the event card, attaching an artifact, and attacking the altar of abomination. No one else is in range, so it's fine. Okay. Enter. Aggressive auditing. Yeah, Murmur likes to audit, I think. But also, yeah, that that event card, I think, was called aggressive auditing, I think, is what you're referring to. So here, ranged, I deal two damage. And then infernal place, I deal three damage. And then I do one damage for melee. Oh, wait, it might heal up. If it heals, right, it should heal up one point. So this should be three battles. Oh, it's... Everything's coming up perfect. Wait, I have 31. I gained 4 prestige. So this is what I played. Combat with 3-fold prestige for 3 turns. Okay. So, oh, so this terrain, does it do anything? Requires Ravine Walker to enter. Oh, okay, so you can't just walk there. A unit needs to be Ravine Walker. So who, who actually walked onto the... 
the opening. You. You have Ravine Walker? You do. Oh, it's because it's one of these... They're not Ravine Walkers. It's, uh... They're called Crawlers, but it looks like they're flying. But also, just a nice touch. I'm not sure if everyone has noticed this. All this art is actually, like, perspective when you move the mouse over it. It's not just flat pieces of art, which is just a really nice touch. They all have, like, three layers. Maybe more, actually. There's one, two, three, four... Four layers? Maybe five. Can't quite tell if those background eye things are actually attached to the background layer. Four or five layers of art there. That's really good. Uh, where was I? I was doing this. So I cannot walk onto that. Okay. So I will be attacking again. It did heal up. So this is going to be three battles. So if I check here, it is now one out of three. Oh, it's it's perfect. It's working out perfectly. Vote on this. All Archfiends draw one event card or all Archfiends lose one random event card. I forget to play them anyway. <laughs> uh, Darth of Tribute continues. A tribute right now is still kind of sucky. If I look at Sanctum powers... So anything I want to go for. Healing rate plus one is actually really good. Rank to level up is 60. It's going to take a while to get there. I could seek manuscripts and get tribute. So I'll attack again. I know tribute is kind of sucky right now, but... A little bit more money is better than nothing. Right, I'll seek a manuscript because I might be able to boost my melee a little bit. But also, ranged is currently kind of a worry. Is there anything that would increase ranged? I could get a better Praetor. Range plus two. No, but they're all range plus two. The current one I do have is range plus two. This is good stats, though. Health. I need to increase health. Okay. End turn. I think this is good. Dark Augury again. I don't know why people are so interested in my stuff. Surely everyone's played that on me by this point. <laughs> okay, so you're walking down. Oh, could they snipe it? Oh, wait, no, they're, they're turning. They're turning. It's okay. Walking around the volcanic lava. So, second attack where I take no damage. Perfect. Very nice. Andromalius is the regent. I've got 35 prestige. So we're definitely doing that. Grab the tribute I need. What am I most short on? These things. Good. Uh, hey, splintering parry. Sinew slice. These, these are dueling things which are not... What's this? The Mount Bank offers you a temporary dividend calculated as a percentage of gross tribute with a sub-dividend of unclaimed tribute payable on section selection to a suitable third-party account. Rest assured, I will take care of everything. <laughs> so, if you don't know, Mammon is Hell's Banker. I must choose a response. And it's worded in a way where... You're meant to not understand it. But... Okay. Any economists or bankers in, in chat? <laughs> Any economists or bankers in chat? <laughs> um, the bank offers you a temporary dividend. Temporary dividend? What does that mean? Calculated as a percentage of gross tribute. 
so a percentage of the total tribute, with a subdividend of unclaimed tribute, payable on selection to a suitable third party account. I think what it means is someone else gets the money. And I should reject. I think I think that's that's what I should do. I should reject this. Cause payable on selection to a suitable third party account. So th payable to a third party account is not his and not my account. But also a temporary dividend. I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. It might be saying this is a bad thing for someone else and I should accept it. Because temporary dividend, does that mean you have they'll be claiming it back later? Subdividend calculated of unclaimed tribute payable. Or maybe just the second part goes to other people and the main part goes to me. I think I should reject. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Uh, what happened? All Archfiends draw an event card. Okay, I received... The cost of rituals for all Archfiends is increased for three to six... Increased for three to six turns. Right, oh, I don't need that. Darth of Tribute continues. This continues. An upset in the arena. Oh, there was a, a thing going on. This was... Murmur and Andromalius. Awarded 34 for the technical victory. Murmur just got a lot of prestige. Okay. So, I think I just seek more tribute. And seek another manuscript. Yeah. Also, level up. Two more victories to level up. Okay, so won't be leveling up soon. Alright, enter. No one else is in range. You wouldn't trust it either? Yeah, it's just... Murmur's banking language is so hard to understand. And I get it. So that's three battles without taking damage. Perfect. So I now have 98 prestige. <laughs> okay. So because I plotted something and I achieved it. You know? Select your tribute. Uh, Infernal Blast, Portal Training, I guess that's kind of useful. Uh, a message from the Fallen Angel. So I don't know whether this extra prestige gained from combat applied to that. I don't know if there's a breakdown for all the prestige I got in that last turn because I got like, I had like 35, I would have gone up to 39. So I gained like 59 prestige on that. So I played this event in Fury and Glory, which means triple prestige gain from combat. And I did conquer a place of power. This place also gives you two prestige. Um, you will not be bound by the chains of avarice. That sounds like a good thing. Um, and I completed the scheme which gave me 25, so I gained 6 from Places of Power, 25 from completing my scheme, which is 31. And I got 32 from capturing the- oh, it, it does break it down. Okay, I gained 32. So that means I got 63?
because I'm not 100% sure how much prestige I had before this. So I gained 32 from this battle report. So I think that event actually played in my favor because it was triple. So I think this is three times as much as you're supposed to get. Okay. Uh, let me check the bazaar. What else is in here? Could do with another unit, I guess. Five, four, zero. Six, four, eight. This would be better to have, but it's way more expensive. Stygian Guard. I can almost afford it, though. I just need a lot more fire. And a little bit more of everything else. So what I can do on this turn is I go to rank, upgrade to Duchess. Seek tribute, seek tribute. And then maybe I can buy that next turn. So where am I heading next? I could head for this. Zero, six, nine. I can kill it, but... I can't safely get there. Zero, three, seven on this thing. Yeah, I think I need to go to war with Murma. Because I can't really get to anywhere else. We're kind of locked in right now. Okay. So I'm gonna prep up, build up, and maybe go to war with Murma. Oh, they're walking to the face in the sand. I see. Can they take it? Two, four, eight. So they'll deal six damage and take two. Yeah, they'll take it in two turns and they'll survive just about. I wonder if I could mess them up. No, I'd... You could cast, like, offensive and nerfing spells on enemies if you had more deceit when you're not at war. Okay, so I need to select Tribute. If I check Bazaar, I wanted to buy this unit, which is 7475. 7475. So I actually have enough Darkness, have enough Icor. I need one soul and five hellfire can i get one soul and five hellfire one two three i need one more hellfire yeah there's one soul three hellfire right i thought i needed five hellfire maybe it was four um so I need more Hellfire. Three. Good. Not Diplomacy. Bizarre. Wait, I can't afford it? Seven, four, seven, five. Oh, I need to consolidate. Because, yeah, so I need, yeah, this is what I need to consolidate. So basically, I, I don't have, I can't fit the payment into eight tokens. So I have enough, but I need to combine a lot of things. So it basically needs some of everything. So I can combine all of these combiney ones. Uh, this is another drop, another soul. Another soul, another. Uh. Okay, then from that I could pay next turn. So you gotta consolidate first and place the bid next turn. Okay. Uh, besides that, 
just need more tribute, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Could keep seeking manuscripts. Maybe I'll get the, the one I'm missing. I need a close quarters training manuscript to increase a unit's melee attribute. And the regent. Cannot create stratagems. That actually might be better for me. Darth of Tribute has ended. So I'm now Duchess. This one costs 90? Okay, we'll get there soon enough. Because we're now getting... Oh yeah, so this is the total prestige I'm getting per turn. Plus 6 per turn. I have to be ahead of pretty much everyone else, right? Okay. Could I please explain a bit on who are the entities or factions of the game's underworld? For instance, what does Murmur stand for represent? Uh, what's this economy system of hell looks like capitalism? Oh, you should hear the hell's banker talk. <laughs> one of the characters, since you're asking about... They're called Archfiends. Uh, one of the, the leaders that you can play is basically hell's banker. They keep trying to trick you into um, making confusing deals so this is the first other player to capture a place of power we're we're well in the lead right now so there's one archfiend which is basically military strength there's one uh so, so let me see the ones which are here uh andromalius is the chari charisma one um mamon is the money banker one murmur is uh spellcasty one. Ursabet is kind of a slightly strength, slightly tricky one. And then there's others where there's one which is just straight military strength, there's one which is straight deceit and trickery, and there's the new bug one, which I'm actually not quite sure what they're good at. The gates of hell has sealed itself while it remains closed for four turns. Archfiends have received no offerings. They cannot seek tribute or seek manuscripts. Right. For the next four turns. Good thing I just did this. So, I just wanted more. Stuff. Any luck? Portal training? Okay. Okay. Unbreakable stance, dueling move. Well, we can work towards that. Emergency vote. All items currently on sale at the bazaar is replaced with new ones. Permanently discounted. So my voting power is three because I've ranked up. I guess permanently discounted is good. Because I'm actually trying to buy something from the bazaar right now. I want to buy the Stygian Guard. And I want to buy it before. Let's throw on... I don't think anyone's going to be buying this, right? Let's just throw on one extra coin. In case someone is, someone else is paying extra. Besides that, I'd want to attach a Praetor to it, right? Valak. Plus four infernal, plus two range. That's really good. Because the thing I'm buying is six, four, eight. Melee is the weakest one. Unholy crucible. Adds an additional two icor, two hellfire tribute token to offerings if attached to a place of power. Wow, okay. That's really specific. Prove Allegiant's movements. Can I bid on this as well? Because that's actually really good. Increase movement speed. Melee plus one. That's why it's cheap, isn't it? This will be discounted next turn. But I don't know if I'll be able to afford it because... 
We can't even seek tribute. You know, a, an extra Praetor is good to have. Wait, is it that expensive? Wait, wait, wait. How expensive is this? Two seven. But just plus one melee? But later on, having an, a spare Praetor will be good to have. You know what? Sure. We'll get plus one melee on our Stygian guard, just so it's six, five, eight. I'm just doing three bids this turn, not doing anything else. Before things are discounted next turn, which seems like a bad idea, but also once it's discounted, everyone's gonna be bidding on all that stuff, and I want that stuff, so I'm gonna pay the premium to lock it in. Just moving around. Okay. I got my new unit. Now I'm feeling pretty powerful. Regent right now is Andromalius. Okay. I am the highest ranking. Mamon hasn't even leveled up at all. Chains of Avarice. Okay, so. Uh, Injalif Mage. Uh, this is this is what I mean by this is the, the banking character. They keep sending this stuff. The Mount Bank offers you a temporary dividend calculated as a percentage of gross tribute with a sub-dividend of unclaimed tribute payable on selection to a suitable third-party account. Rest assured, I will take care of everything. And you have to say yes or no. <laughs> Is there forces of heaven in this game? Uh, yes. Um, a giant angel can show up and just start killing uh, everything. So that, that, there is a giant angel. I generally reject because I don't understand what Chains of Avarice is. Okay. So I also now want to attach. I did get it. Wait. Eligos is the one I have here. Yes. And then artifact. No, not artifact. What did I? What else did I bid on? So wait, this this Zul is just yeah, that's gonna be the plus one, okay. Um so under manuscripts, I did that's what I did. I got Marching training, right? Yeah. I don't know if those are any good. Like, if I send a Praetor to fight, it's gonna be Zul? I guess I could come up with another plot, right? So... Votes counted, stale goods, right? So now everything in the bazaar is going to be discounted. Some things are still really expensive. I don't think I can afford anything. This is no cost. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> discounted so far, it, it has no cost because it only costed one, I think. I need this. I can't believe I... There it is. There's the one I want. I don't have enough money. I can't believe it. I can't seek tribute. I just needed one Icor to get it. What are the odds that shows up in the bazaar? That's so annoying. Okay. Well, I guess I can start wanting to go to war with Murma, right? So let's, instead of plotting, let's go to diplomacy. And go to Murma. And I want to... Demand tribute. Extort Murma for a high value asset. Praetor. Artifact.
Prieto. Like, they're likely to say no, which is kind of the point. Yeah. They don't like that. Okay, so... It says a mutually beneficial contract. I think I'm starting to understand that Mamon gets extra tribute. Like, we both get extra tribute, but I think Mamon gets more extra tribute. So I'll get more, but they'll get even more. I think that's the idea. Okay, let's end turn. So I can extort as an ask for a high value thing because this particular character is leveled up to that point. When I'm playing um, Astaroth, the military one, they can only demand. You have to level up your skills to get um, the higher value things, the higher value extort. Oh, they're getting more military as well. I gotta be careful here. That's a nine hit point enemy. Okay, what is this? Zero, zero, 0014, nine hit points. So I don't want to attack it with this because this one plays Infernal before melee. But I could kill it with this one. This is 037, so it's useless. Vile Apostates. Range Vulnerability. Plus 4 damage taken during range phase. So I would do 6. And then I'll take 4. So I'll still win. But I don't want to take 4 damage. Demand received from Andromalius. Where's Andromalius? Is this Andromalius? That's Andromalius. Okay, what's the demand? Four tribute tokens? Can I just accept? I don't have four tribute tokens. I only have three. So I have to reject it. That means Andromalius will have a reason to go to war with me. Well, I haven't declared war on Murmur yet. So what I should do is actually... Group up my army. Because if Andromalius comes for me, they would... Attack from this unit here into these. So this is 248. 248. They can't even take this place. Oh, I might end up fighting this and then go for the face in the sand. That actually works out quite well. Yeah. Uh, I can't seek tribute. I can't seek manuscripts. How much point consolidating? I guess now I plot. Alright, let's see what happens. I mean, they can't attack that. I'm just claiming these cantons. They teleport. Vanity's anointed. Plus two dueling damage, plus two prestige from combat. So dueling damage, so that's not battle damage. So I'm claiming these cantons as well. Okay. Select scheme. Invoke three manuscripts. 
perform three successful rituals. I can actually invoke three manuscripts. I've got a lot of manuscripts worth more prestige uh, publicly. So if I check here, uh, invoke three manuscripts, it should just mean any manuscripts, right? Murmur rejected. Uh, your vote will be required on something. Okay, so let's see what happens. Um, I c might be able to do a successful vendetta here. Declare vendetta. Set terms. They don't have a place of power. So let's just set it to capture territory. Three. I don't need the prestige. Let's give myself some extra time here. Three cantons in four turns. Confirm. Right. They got some military going. So I can't give the order to attack this turn. Okay. Um, so instead, I could get to work on... These are all just dueling stuff. So if I, I want to apply all the dual stuff to Zul, sure. Uh, manuscripts. Zul. Uh, wait, what? What am I casting on this thing? <laughs> Hold on, wait. Uh, this is Feral Lunge. Okay, so Zul right now knows Feral Lunge and Splintering Parry. So I think I, it's replacing their abilities, right? So I'm not too concerned about this. I just want to cast three manuscripts. So let's invoke on Zul. But then again, does the other one need? What do you have? Splinting Parry, Infernal Blast. I guess I should invoke Feral Lunge on Eligos. And replace that. Wait, why can't I confirm it? Can they not learn it? That might be a bug. I'm not sure. I can't cast that manuscript. Let me just try a different one. might have found a bug because yeah I, the tooltip is actually oh wait no i can confirm this one oh okay so wait there's there's just a rule that's not being explained here uh this veil of smoke what type of attack is it uh manuscript veil of smoke oh the symbol has to match i see so i'm invoking this manuscript on this no let's let's invoke it on this and it can replace splintering parry. It has to be the same symbol. Right, confirm. And then let's go to manuscripts, splintering parry. So I guess splintering parry can just replace splintering parry, right? Confirm. And can I cast the third one? What is... it's a skull. Feral Lunge. So I can just replace Feral Lunge with Feral Lunge. And that casts three manuscripts, which should be the thing I plotted to do. Good. End turn. Oh, event card. Uh, Abyss the Abyssal Leviathan is unleashed, looking to overthrow one place of power per Archfiend before it returns to the pit. Uh, I don't want that. But I should just take it anyway. It's just one place of power. The problem with the Leviathan is that it walks in a straight line towards a place of power and kills anything in its path. I'm gonna take it. 
because I hope someone else doesn't get it instead. And I don't want to play it. I want it to just expire in my inventory. Okay, everyone's making moves. We should be at war this time. They're going first though. For this first turn, they move first. Just important to keep that in mind. Submit a champion. Furfa. Oh. They don't want to go to war. Well, that's what I got Zul for. So, I'm not good at this. So, Skull defeats Swirly Symbol. They have Swirly Symbols and a Skull. So, I sh if anything, Feral Lunge is a good move to play here. And their fer Feral Lunge... Oh, it stacks! See the number in the top right? So, th there should be some more tooltips on this. That number in the top right, I think, is Strength. So, I didn't... Um, it didn't replace, it added on. So my Feral Lunge is now more powerful. Chains of Avarice. No, I don't want your weird deal. <laughs> Vendetta claimed war with Murmur. Okay, so we are at war now, and I need to capture many Cantons. So let's move up. No, not like that. There. And you will move there. If a battle happens, we should be good either way. If it fights this one, which is the only one it could reach, because they have... Oh, they only have one movement point. Okay, they can't even... Oh, they, but they can teleport three. I see. So, if it fights this, we'll only take four damage and it will die. Um, if it fights this, we will kill it before it can deal any damage to us. Yes, okay, so we win either way. This unit down here is not strong. 037, it can't deal damage to either of our units. Yeah, we just overpower Murmur right now. Oh, we can seek tribute again. I guess it doesn't matter if our units move second. Let's get some good tribute in because we've been broke for a long time. Hey, come on. I did Library of Hell, so I got that, so I got 94 prestige! <laughs> okay, I won't rank up this turn, but... Because I did that, Libraries of Hell invoking the manuscripts. So this... Yeah, so I just don't really know what the, the number in the top right means. I think it's strength. Okay. Enter. So who's doing what? We're currently at war with Dark Purple. I'm wondering if I could get over one tile. And then get access to face in the sand from this side. Okay, Murmur can't do anything. I've got an even 100 prestige. Okay. So, I basically want access to this face in the sand. So we're moving... to here. I have to stop on the tile to claim it. But you can move over to here. So we'll get the three cantons either way. This could move down and engage in a battle, which we will just win. Oh, they've got plus two range now. Let me just check. We'll deal four damage, and then we'll deal five damage, which is nine hit points. Even if they attack us, they'll deal six damage. Four, five, six. We have eight hit points, so we will win. 
I want to take this face in the sand because it's the only thing that someone else owns. I could have gained access to the Palace of Gluttony as well, but we don't have enough turns to do that. Getting these two tiles will also trap them in a weird spot, splitting Murmur's cantons. Okay, we also gotta take tribute. Uh, grab that. Grab that. Grab that. Grab that. Praetor duel commences. Go to the Grand Arena. Select your dueling move. So... I should pick Feral Lunge. We could add a bribe, but I don't have... Good. Add a bit of a bribe, I guess. So, if they play Feral Lunge, my Feral Lunge is a stronger. Um, if they play the Swirly thing, it's also three. My Feral Lunge is supposed to counter that. I'm just paying attention to the duel because I'm not good at it. Um... If they play Seal of Reputation, the opponent's technique is cancelled and has no effect, right? So if they play this, it should mean we just stalemate, I guess. But also, my thing is three strength, that thing is two strength. I don't know if it means it'll cancel two and one remains and I win. Let's find out. You'll not be bound. Okay. Uh, Vendetta continues with Murmur. Okay. So I'll get access to Face in the Sand. I overpower this thing. So I want to go to Diplomacy. Conduct Diplomacy with Andromalius. And I'm... I can't because we have to wait for the duel... Damn. I wanted to... Oh, this is where we play it. The Our special ability. Uh, is a five-turn diplomatic armistice that allows Ursabeth's legions to cavort. <laughs> cavort through her target's territories. So if I do this to someone, I can pay ten prestige and just walk through their, their stuff. Okay, well in that case, what I should do is rank up to princess... Very nice. Uh, and then... Good. End turn. I actually hope this thing does move down so we can kill it. Are you going for the Palace of Gluttony? Can't be. You've only got three hit points. No, Murmur can't do anything. I'm just stomping over their land. I'm splitting your kingdom. By the way, if any of you want to help support today's sponsor, Solium Infernum, uh, do click that link in chat. Ooh. Is that from Murma? See, sometimes you, you don't even know who's casting the spells. So I've got 31 prestige because I just won the war versus Murma. Luckily, I move this up to my Tower of Pride, so it heals back up. Abyssal Infestation. Ooh. Uh, I actually want these things around. So this spawns those demon horses, and, you know, killing them helps rank up your soldiers. So I actually want this to be near me. So in this case, I'd want it to spawn in Murmur's place. I have voting power four right now, so this is Murmur, right? Yeah, Murmur. Vendetta successful. Great. I also now have access to face in the sand. And I would want to move this unit down to here. Sure, we can grab that. That way Murmur can't move out that way. This unit is stuck down here. This unit is stuck up there. We've just trashed Murmur's... Uh, lands. 
Yeah, Enslaved with Ursavet. Rank increase. Attribute offering. I received some of that stuff. Good. Adversaries bicker. So, Preto, what happened here? I won. Okay. Zul used Feral Lunge. So I, I never properly read this stuff, so I need to properly read this now. Zul used Feral Lunge to earn glory and seven prestige for Ursabet. This champion now has one victory in the arena. Okay. So as far as I can tell, we just were more powerful. Which means I got prestige from that as well. This face in the sand. I want it. So now I can go to Diplomacy. Andromalius. I can... Why can I not? Preto Duel makes it... Im oh, okay, because the duel only concluded this turn. It's still technically moving through. Okay. So I guess we'll seek tribute. What manuscripts do I still have? Marching training, portal training, close quarters training. I actually want all of that. Don't suppose that's still here. Oh, close quarters training is still here! Yeah, I'll overpay one. Devilish regeneration. Swamps of hell. Do my units have any free slots? Stygian God has a slot for an artifact. Uh, bizarre. No, nothing I want. Okay, so I'm gonna bid on the close quarters training, which will increase the melee stat of... I should use it on the Stygian Guard, actually. I shouldn't do the glass cannon technique that I would, I've been doing. I should have two good units, not one mega unit. It makes it very difficult to do anything. Okay, this is good. End turn. Okay, so my vote did actually work. These Abyss Striders are now all over the place. I'm claiming these Cantons. I thought I saw a little glitch of an image. You were asking about the forces of hell. There is... Uh, the forces of heaven, rather. There is that thing. Ugh. Okay. Angelic host incursion. So... It will go and kill one legion from each house. But also, it will walk through anything that gets in its way. I don't think 1818-0. Don't think we can kill it. So. So reformation means I will get this unit back after six turns. So I should actually try and sacrifice this unit to that. So what I should do is run away there. And you run towards it. But also... I would want to transfer this stuff off. You know, I want to transfer the artifact to you. Let's actually cancel this order and transfer a prayer to Eligos. Try get because when the unit dies, you lose the prayer to and the artifact. So I'm going to run this away, transfer this stuff off, and hope that this... Uh, it says... Does it go for any particular... One legion from each great house by order of their military strength. So it, it's starting with me, right? It has to be starting with me. 
Is this considered 10, 19, 21? 8, 14, 19. So technically this unit is more powerful. This is what I have to do. I got the close quarters training, but I have to see which unit survives this, this thing. All right, let's just see what happens. Oh, right, I got to select tribute. I can pick f all five? I can pick five. Right, because I'm like super high rank now. And Leviathan Rising, you receive a, an amount of high value tribute. Oh, okay. Let's do that. Okay. Let's see what happens. Does it move last? I think it moves last. So I'm running away from it. And then I'm transferring stuff off of my most powerful unit. Oh, but does transferring it off of my most powerful unit mean it's no longer the most powerful and the angelic host will go for something else? I don't know. I don't need to watch you struggle to kill a... Vanity's anointed, okay. Yeah, okay, I just... And now, what are, what are you killing? Me, right? Which one? Which one? It's killing the one I didn't want it to kill, of course! Of course it is. You're running the wrong way too. Okay. Of course that happened. <laughs> Things can only go so well for you for so long. I'm pulling away from the angelic host. It's killed one of mine, okay? Um, guess I'll put the Praetor and the... Oh, I transferred the artifact to the other... So I lost that Praetor as well. Okay. Well, there's room for... Negates the opposing legion's named abilities. Don't really need that stuff. I could get that. Oh. Oh, this thing has upkeep. Plus three melee, plus two range. What do I have right now? I have the one that adds plus two range, right? And melee last, right? Okay. Let's just get out of the way of the angelic host. Okay. I'm gonna kill that unit, good. I like watching the big explosion though. Vile apostates. Okay, so this is actually the their unit that they bought as well. Not the one that will regenerate. So they just lost that Barbados, Barbatos as well, the Praetor. 
around. Okay. Sure. Okay, well, I do have this manuscript for close quarters training. I can invoke this on the enslaved of Ursabet. So increase the legion's melee attribute. Okay. So ranged attribute is still the weak point here. But Andromalius and the face in the sand have no range. So let's go to diplomacy. Conduct diplomacy. Demand. Extort. An artifact. Because I actually need an artifact. Because right, I'm missing an artifact. Yeah, understood. Uh, don't assume nothing's changed. Okay. Let's see. Tribute is first. Invoke manuscript. Extort. Yeah. Then next turn I'll start walking up to the face in the sand. Which 0, zero hey, 10, cold. 6, 7, 8. It's got 11 hit points. We tie on Infernal. Yeah, I don't know how much melee damage I'm going to get from this. But okay, enter. Hopefully the angelic host... Yeah. ...kills this unit right here. <laughs> Perfect. So this is the Chosen by Andromalius. They'll, they'll come back in four turns. Okay. Tribute. Let's... Oh, right. I also have this. I have to pay that much? You're rewarded simply for being you and receive an amount of high-value tribute. I have to assume... You would get more tribute than you pay for it, right? I'm gonna walk over towards the face in the sand. I'm gonna reject your weird bank offer. The extortion is delivered. So I should be able to, if they reject, I'll be able to attack this next turn. Portal training. So I don't really know how this works, but let's invoke this manuscript on the enslaved of Ursabed as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Overall, things are going well. The last time this angelic host thing happened, I lost my only unit. This time I was not glass cannoning on one unit, so I actually still have my chosen units. Everyone else is losing a lot of stuff. 1818-0 is actually kind of interesting. Like, you could... Like, if you get an infernal place first... Oh, but it has 22 hit points. You need, like, Infernal Place first, and... Um, deal 22 damage in a turn. Then you could kill it. What's happening now? Oh, this is... right. Okay, you do get more back. Except. Andromalius. Okay, declare Vendetta, set terms, capture a place of power. In three turns. Uh, three turns, just to be safe. Capture a place of power. Confirm. Oh, it's got a... Right. Well, while I do that, I could... Maybe capture a canton or two. So wait, portal training. 
Teleport. Legion can move three cantons, ignoring terrain instead of marching. Legion's Wait, so I can teleport this now to there. Oh, that's really good. Also, I gained so much. Plus four. Melee strength. Okay. Right, so this thing has zero, zero. So I'm doing 12 damage. I'll take it in one turn. Okay. <laughs> um, that manuscript was really good. Do I want to buy anything? Any good artifacts out there? No. Increases a legion's melee attribute. All right, we could do it again. I'm I'm back to glass cannoning because. I should just have another unit though, right? But these units will just die to almost anything. It's fine, it's fine. Let's just seek more tribute. Teleport, then bid. Yeah. Okay, so we can now teleport like some of those other units. So I'm going to own the only place's power controlled by anyone. <laughs> Conclave favorite, really. Andrew Marius is actually pulling ahead of me on prestige and I'm not sure why they're getting so much prestige. Vendetta claimed. I can now do this, this. Select our tribute. Good. Murmur sends a message. Yeah, there. So the angelic host has left. Killed one unit from every player. Close quarters training was one. If I check bazaar. Manuscripts. Another close quarters training. Perfect. Let's place a bid. I really want this. I'm going to throw on an extra coin. Wait, no. That, that coin I'm pay paying is already an extra hellfire. Good. This is a better throwaway unit. Just to have. Okay, I'm gonna take this face in the sand. So I deal two damage first. And then I'll do ten damage. Wait, no, it plays Infernal, which drawed, and then Melee. <laughs> right, Melee plays last. I have to keep that in mind. And I capture this one Canton. Just for added effect. Oh, you're getting a unit. There we go, 76. And another place of power, which I think is another two, pre uh, two prestige per turn. We're now getting eight prestige per turn because it's face in the sand. Also plus two prophecy strength. Ah. That's good. <laughs> All right. So we did quite a lot there. Um, so I have... Did I get another... I can invoke another close quarters training. And make our melee even more powerful. It has also leveled up, which is great. I could do plus four ranged, so our range doesn't suck. Yeah, I think I should definitely do this. Plus through melee, plus it's like plus six, plus six is really good. Plus four range. It identifies the weakest one, and then says, "Okay, we're gonna 
give you that one, but it's like minus two. But plus four range, really good. Promote. Okay. So now this is a proper glass cannon. We're going to get another plus four melee as well. <laughs> this unit's going to be so powerful. All right, but I have to take a short break because I need to use the restroom. So I'll be right back, okay? I'll be right back, yeah? Okay, I'm back. Thank you so much for waiting. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So we're going... We're, we're doing very well right now. I think we're pretty much dominating. It's just when the certain events happen that kind of really throws us off. Also, I just want to check with you. Is, am I sounding okay? Is anything glitching out? Because I'm looking over at my streaming software and visually my streaming software is lagging, but stats wise, everything seems to be okay. So I just want to check if I'm sounding and looking, everything's looking okay. Any lag or stuttering? Or weird audio glitches because those audio bars are doing something weird all seems good there's no problems okay so i don't know why it's doing that it's just very concerning i'm looking over at my streaming software and it's doing something wrong, <laughs> you know? Okay, so we're now ahead. So stream seems crisp. Thank you so much, Jimanyan. So do you. <laughs> um, what do I have here? A random archfiend is stung by thoughts of her and loses one point in a random power. Oh, I should just play this. Does it have to be that? The more you press it, the worse it gets, huh? Yeah, okay. But yeah, sure, just just play that. Someone else loses a point of power. Perfect. Uh, so I'm invoking a manuscript. I'm playing Torment. So I guess I should now... Uh, I should just kill Murma, right? Let's demand. Extort a artifact. Give me an artifact, or I'll come kill you. Yeah, good. Oh. Mama, can you... Oh, I wish I could just auto-reject Mamon <laughs> every time. This Palace of uh, Gluttony is not taken, but also it's quite powerful. 8 to 13. Yeah, no one's taking it because no one's strong enough. I could miss. Oh wait, there's this as well. Uh, 069. No one's claimed this. So I could... March up and take that if I can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charisma plus one. Just adds a charisma power level. Perfect. Okay. So I could... Get another successful vendetta off of Murma. Oh, are you gonna take it? Damn. Maybe not. What unit is this? Another unit? Okay. This is the thing I played. Andromalius's deceit has been reduced to zero. <laughs> Just insult to injury on Andromalius. Huh? Okay, so what is this? Five, five, three. Five, five, three. You would take quite a lot of damage. Six hit points. Yeah, you can't take that. What's this? Oh, these, these are trash units. I'd want to kill them both. So I can teleport over to here. Extortion delivered. Close quarters training. Okay. 6, 14, 10. <laughs> oh, my melee is so powerful. Uh, 
You know, I, I think I just like the... Like, it'd be good to have this, I guess. Negates opposing legions' named abilities. So, for example, I have... Um, uh, it would be melee last, right? I assume this is a named ability. Or does it mean, like, unwavering or like that? Cannot be converted using rituals. Because I don't know if these... Eldritch Charge, like that. Plus four Infernal when attacking, right? So if I get this artifact... That won't happen. So sure, let's get that. Didn't I hire a trash unit? Did I not win that bid? Someone else? Damn. Okay. I just kind of want another unit around. Because, you know, things happen. Okay, I'm going to teleport over because I, I just want to march through this stuff. I don't think they can hurt me at all. My weakest is range, which is 6, 14, 10. 6, 14, 10, 6. No, th these are both trash units. <clears throat> How many battles? Four victories to level up. Okay. Don't have... I need another piece of that. Okay. End turn. Just getting in position. I got my second unit. Just to have something in the way. I'm regent. I'm now definitely getting the most prestige per turn. Demand received from Marmon. So, Murma rejected your thing. So, I'll declare a vendetta. I want to destroy two legions. Now, I don't really care for the prestige reward it's so meaningless at this level so i'm just going to give myself maximum turns to destroy two of their legions because things can happen you know or i can wager more prestige yeah okay i guess that makes sense right because i'm very confident about killing two of their legions set terms confirm because they have those two, and they have this one down here. So I could I could walk down and kill that, or teleport and walk down and kill that. Okay, demand received from Mamon. Three tribute tokens. Where is Mamon? There. Thing is, I don't want to be going to two wars at the same time, so I'm going to just give you three tribute tokens. Yeah, leave me alone. Oh, I also got the drums of woe, so I should put that on you. So I can't attack this turn, right? No, not yet. No, 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 don't do that. Uh, cancel. So I'm attaching the artifact. I should seek tribute. And seek more tribute, I guess? Tribute quality goes down by one for each order slot. You put it down. Okay, so attach the artifact and then I can march through everything next turn. Okay, good. End turn. Let's see what happens. Turn 30. 
Oh, no one did anything. Okay. Stack tribute. Stack tribute. Vote on Edict, Purged Week. All level 1 and 2 legions hired from the bazaar are destroyed. A random hired legion from each Archfiend domain is banished. Damn it. Why now? Kill all of that. Hey, cold cards. Which ones? Okay. All level one and two legions had a random hired legion. It has to be random because I need to kill two units and if purge happens, Murma will lose both of these, and then I won't have the two units to kill. Hopefully I can kill one. Like, I'm actually hoping I just steamroll through both. I don't know if that's possible. But... I hope it is. Legions of lemurs. <laughs> I don't know if you can do two battles in one go, because I, I want to do that. Yeah, okay, fine. And then I guess I... Yeah, I was sort of thinking my unit might get stuck, but I forgot it can teleport. Let's go to our Sanctum. We are max rank, yeah. We could level up some stuff here. That's always good to have. Vaults, no, don't want that. Infinite, no. It's fine, I guess. I'll seek tribute. Okay, let's do that. Let's see what happens. Oh, you're moving up. Good, come closer to me. That's actually really good. Right, let's kill one thing. We do four damage on ranged. It's getting some buffs because it's next to a unit and next to the stronghold. All oh, right, infernal plays first. Melees actually are stronger than our infernals, so actually, infernal playing before melee is now a bad thing, unless it happens. Oh, you can just double kill. <laughs> if I could level up this unit and give it more hit points, we're not even glass cannoning anymore. We're, we're just... Yeah, see this? This is, this is my vulnerability. That's how I can lose a glass cannon. But that should mean the war is over, right? We killed two units. Vendetta successful, yes. Oh. Because I was on an enemy territory and it's not next to my territory, it kicked me back to here. Huh. Oh, I thought I would capture that canton, and then I could... Uh, okay, fine. So Purge the Weak happened. So... Murma didn't even have any units. That unit's gone. So I lost my other unit. 
Right. I'm pretty rich though. Uh, no, not this. Bazaar. 10,000 screaming bastards. <laughs> sure. Let's buy 10,000 of those guys. <laughs> um, destruction resistance. This is actually something I should have, right? That would protect my my unit. Increases Allegiant Infernal Attribute. Ooh. Let's buy that as well, yeah, okay. Just spend all our cash money. I'm wondering if I can walk up to here. I can teleport three tiles, right? Can I teleport to an unclaimed canton and attack that from there? Could I do that? So I'm just going to buy a bunch of stuff first. Alright, so... We're doing pretty good on the prestige front here. Now I set this game to 50 turns. Maybe I should have set it to 30. Or 40, rather. Winds of Discord. Ursabet no longer controls the place of power face in the sand. This event card. So this is now up for grabs. But who can get it? You can't walk through that. That's someone else's territory. I have to just go grab it again. Okay, so let's teleport. There. Can I then? Uh, I can't teleport and then move, can I? So let's teleport over. No, reject. So I got this 10,000 screaming bastards. Uh, how many battles? Two more victories to level up. If I capture Face in the Sand and then the Garden of Infernal Delights, I could level it up and hopefully I'll get a hit point roll. To increase the hit points. Um, also, I... Did I win that bid on that artifact? Yes. I want to attach this to... Oh, this artifact only goes... Can this not go onto a unit? Oh, okay, it doesn't... It only works in a place of power. Well, it's plus one prestige, so I'll put that on my stronghold. So let's... Keep that there, then. Um, get me more money. It's probably indicated somewhere on an icon, but sure. It's still plus one prestige per turn, which is good. Currently, I'm getting plus six. I need to retake the face in the sand. This place will also give me plus two. That'll get me plus ten, plus eleven per turn. That's pretty good. Teleport. Tell it what's behind you. Nothing personal, Murmur. <laughs> oh, Andromalius. I like Andromalius's stronghold. It looks real modern and classy. Kind of brutalism, minimalism kind of stuff. Okay, so you are killing that. We're taking our tribute. I'm the regent. Hey, Request oh. to be vassalized. Murmur wishes to serve. So this this is the problem. Remember I was telling you at the beginning. 
Murmur might have the crown where it's like, oh, if you become the vassal of someone who's going to win. And then they win. Actually, you win instead. Murmur becomes your vassal. You receive your vassal's current prestige total. You and your vassals share diplomatic states with other archfiends, including hostilities. You and your vassal can pass through each other's territories and your legions support each other in combat. If you win via election, your vassal will assume second place. This bond will be broken if either vassal or blood lord are excommunicated. What is Murmur's current um, prestige? Ten. <laughs> You're not worthy. To be vassalized. Instead, I'm going to conduct diplomacy. Why can I not? Pending request to be vassalized means I can't extort them. Fine. Infernal monsoons. Red rains pour down, reducing the movement of all legions to a single canton for three to six turns. This is good for me because I can teleport. So I'm going to take that. I don't think anyone's going to come close to taking it, so I'll get some tribute first. And then seek a manuscript, I guess? Could do with either of those, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's like the reason why I say there's no other game that's like Solium Infernum is because there's all of this deceit. Deceit is really the correct word. It's very. There's a lot of deception in the game. So. No other game really has that sort of level of intrigue in the diplomacy system. There's, so, there's usually a little bit of spying and backstabbing and espionage, but not to this level of, you know, it, it's like beyond backstabbing. <laughs> okay. Mama's getting one prestige per turn. Is that, do you just get one prestige? No, you get two prestige from your stronghold. Why is Murmur getting one prestige per- Oh, they- Oh, different strongholds give different levels of prestige. Oh, so Murmur only gets one prestige per turn. I get two prestige per turn, but Murmur's stronghold has two extra hit points. And they have different stats, right. Even strongholds are different. Right, okay. Well, I retook Face in the Sand. That's good. Um, so, I want to teleport over. I can't reach there. I wonder if I can teleport to there. And then can I teleport to there? Right? Then I could access the Garden of Infernal Delights. What am I high on? I should just grab this. Very good. Uh, marching training is good. Accuracy training. Ooh, increase the region's range attribute. I definitely want that over marching training. But that does mean I just have three single pieces. I check the bazaar for manuscripts. Accuracy training. Perfect. Let's overpay a little bit. Swamp training. Increase our ranged attribute is very good. Vampiric reaping. Immediately heals one hit point of damage immediately heals one hit point per per point of damage dealt during the melee phase i deal like 14 melee damage praetor attribute bonuses are doubled wait where do i attach this because that's just really good as well yeah let's overpay on I have an extra one of those and one of those. Throne of Skulls. 
Do I just attach that to any place of power? So I rejected... Yeah, okay. I would do other things, but I actually want to place those bids first. Your stronghold generates plus two prestige due to the artifact you have. Oh, yes, of course. I. Oh, there's so much stuff in this game. That's a very good point, Chris. <laughs> I attached an artifact so it's plus one more prestige per turn. So it just shows on the UI. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So I want to see. Can I teleport to there? I can. <laughs> Teleport's a good one to have, huh? Um, so what am I doing? Uh, manuscripts. Accuracy training. Let's invoke that okay, cool. on the Enslaved of Ursabet. Confirm. So that will increase our range stat to 10? That will be really good. 10, 14, 10. Portal training, swamp training. No, I don't want those. Oh, right. The thing I bought. So, uh, under artifacts... I have this Throne of Skulls. So it says, so this Praetor is plus two range. So it should actually be plus four range. Attach artifact. Oh, it has to be attached to the unit with the Praetor. Right. So I should actually move this off to the vault first. Actually, instead of moving it to the vault, can I... Um, drums of Woe. Can I attach it? You know what? I don't actually want it on the 10,000 Screaming Bastards. Let's just put it into our vault. Because that'll get me plus two more range. So I'll actually get to 12 range. That's And since range is mostly the first phase that unit name <laughs> i know it. it it's like the worst unit in the game <laughs> one one three it's got five hit points it's got three movement points though actually so it's really good for like capturing cantons and stuff but it's like not really that useful it's just kind of a throwaway unit to have in case oh you have to give up one unit well you can take the ten thousand screaming bastards don't really need them Okay. I really need another order slot. I could get to... I, mean, I could play that as well. I need to get to, like... Um, four. Like, level four at anything. And then you get another... When do you get the next... Can you get another order slot? Because it says you can have a maximum of six. Oh, getting to four in any of them will give you plus one more order slot. So you can get four from this. But there's a maximum of six order slots, right? So I can actually... I could reach seven, but there's no point. But to do this, I would need 15 Icor. Convert Tribute. An additional item of each type is displayed at the bazaar. Really? When seeking manuscripts, one more fragment is drawn? These are all really good. Oh, I can have a maximum of six with the crown. Everyone else, maximum is five. Oh, okay. Okay, so that means, yeah, the crown is just... Makes it good uh did i look at that titan in the bazaar i did but it's 12 16 0 melee twice which is cool <laughs> melee is 16 but it's 12 16 0 my unit is gonna be 12 14 10 so <laughs> My unit is just better than that thing, and it can teleport, and it's got a movement speed of 2 compared to... No, compared to... 
Oh no, it has movement speed. It has have 25 hit points though. But it's got an upkeep cost. So it's like... If I can just increase the hit points on this thing, which... It will do once I take the Garden of Infernal Delights. Go away. You know, if you never want to do that with Marmon, you should just not have Marmon in the game. Because <laughs> Marmon keeps bugging everyone, do my bank deal. <laughs> and everyone's like, no, go away. But if Sons of Typhon gains melee first, and it has melee twice, that is true. Uh, that is actually really correct. <laughs> That's a scary prospect. Murmur did this thing, okay. Alright, so I am taking this thing. Uh, oh, okay, so the accuracy training gave plus three. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to do nine damage and then one damage. And then eight damage on melee. Okay. Uh, so I need to get... All right, I also wanted to do Diplomacy on Murmur. I wanted to demand. Because I, I haven't done three, right? No. Extort. An artifact. Yeah. Give me an artifact or I'll kill you. You haven't seen such cards yet, only ability last. Well, I suppose if you get, like, range last and then infernal last, melee would be first, right? No, you just have to get range last and melee will play first. Yeah, that's why. You, you just need to get range last and melee will be the first phase. I'm the only one on the map who owns a place of power. I just had a really good start and snowballed from there. <laughs> there is a Praetor that gives melee first. Ah, well, there you go. 172. I think I'm I'm pretty much good to go here, right? Select attribute. Good. Legion promotion. Health? Damn it, no health. That's really scary. Plus three range, plus three. Yeah, I think range is the weakest, so I should just boost that up, right? But then again, I'm going to be getting another plus two range. I should get plus seven Infernal, because this thing plays melee last, so Infernal goes first. I was hoping for a health promotion. That looks good. Remember, the 17 plays before the 14, and I'm going to get plus two more on the range. Oh, it gets another slot as well. Yeah, okay. So let's promote that. I wanted to transfer this thing. Is there a stratagem? You can't plus three temporary HP. I need to get to something, right? Like promote level up to something. Let's check the bazaar. Anything for health? Melee plus three, range plus two. Very nice. Block stratagems. Artifacts. Wait, what's this back room? Was this always here? Four fragments granting. That will decrease the wrath of all opponents. What even is this? Time zero range damage taken? Uh, 
get that. There are rituals that heal, yeah. But the problem is I get uh, Infernal Blasted. So when I get Infernal Blasted, I can just lose 7 HP from doing some things. Okay, so... Extortion delivered, right? Um, I just want to kill Murmur. Let's like get more of that. I could... Wait, no. No more auto slots. Understood. Alright. Event card. Uh, I don't know if the hero you are, the archfiend you are, determines what event cards you draw. Because when I played as um, Astaroth, I got a lot of event cards where it's like, oh... Um, what? An event card to promote one of your units, which I would really like this time around, but I haven't gotten any. Great Unholy Crusade. Each Archfiend may select a Legion to send to the War of Heaven for three to six turns. Any Legions that manage to return are showered with glory and receive high-grade promotion. Right. Infernal Monsoon. I'm going to grab this because I prefer... So the extortion was delivered. I'm getting a unit. Getting two units. Okay, very nice. Andromalius is a second place, but I am double their score. Demand received from Mamon. Three tribute tokens. Perfect. I can just grab this. Trash tokens. And you can have those trash tokens. Enjoy your three coins. Murma rejected your extort. Let's declare vendetta. I will destroy... Let's just do destroy one legion this time. Let's not risk it with something weird happening. I'm assuming these units are trash. Ooh, this one's the Hammers of Hell. Ten hit points, yeah. I mean, we're we're just so powerful. So now we have 11 range because this thing is doubling. Can you have two artifacts on... You can have two artifacts on the same unit, right? Yeah. I would like to... Manuscript... Marching training. Yeah, I could do with that. Let's seek manuscript. Seek manuscript. Marching training would be handy to have so I can walk and teleport three tiles, if anything. Because if I could walk three tiles, I could march right through and kill both units in one go. Okay, also, all of these tiles are now next to my tiles. So if anything, I will capture the canton. All right. one swamp training yeah I think this is fine unless I just check the manuscript it's fine also this could make them better at dueling okay, enter we should be able to win this vendetta pretty easily oh people are finally moving out again that angel really slows down the game when it goes around and kills everyone's units. <laughs> but not me, because I had a backup plan. Okay, Vendetta claimed. Let's do that. Uh, let's claim Obsidian Skin, Marching Training, Feral Lunge. Marching Training. Bleeding Wounds, Sinew Slice, Obsidian Skin. Okay. 
skip that, I guess. Alright, so we're gonna go kill that. And then we can kill Murma. If I check my Sanctum powers, how much more do I need for this? 15 Iker? I am unconcerned with murmurs. <laughs> yeah, they just die. And I will actually capture this canton. And then we're right next to murmurs stronghold. Ah, 208. Very nice. Gilded of Mammon has been destroyed. A legion under the command of Mammon has been destroyed without warning or justification. Woo! It's a good thing that didn't happen to me. <laughs> Punishment for all that. Um, banking stuff. So yeah, I needed Iker. So let's do that. Vote on edict. This is what? Accusations of fraudulent activity. An accusation of fraudulent activity within the conclave should not be taken lightly. Indeed, it should be saluted. <laughs> the successful candidate will have five random tribute, take to tribute tokens confiscated, but will be rewarded 20 prestige for the exemplary display of devilish behavior. So, I should pick the one I'm about to kill. I have beaten Murma. So now I can go to diplomacy. Murma. I can declare a blood feud. Confirm. And I can kill Murma. Uh, I wanted to go to my sanctum. Powers. Level up this. Alright, we gotta consolidate first. So what does it need? It's the 15 Iker, right? So let's start combining all the Iker. And then it's souls. Consolidate. Okay. I also got marching training that I will invoke on my enslaved. That should increase their movement at least to three. End turn. Oh, they're getting another unit. Very well. So, <laughs> perfect. So, they get a bit more prestige and had their tokens confiscated. A clerical error cancels all active vendettas, demands, and insults. Prestige wages are returned and cooldown reset. Oh, if someone does some stuff to me, I could play that. Blood feud claimed against Murmur. So, if I want to level up, I should actually go around killing the units, right? Ravine Walker, Dire Onslaught, plus four melee when attacking. But I have the Drums of Woe, which negates the opposing legion's named abilities. So this doesn't matter. That also doesn't matter. So if I want to level up, five more victories to level up. I could do three here. <laughs> Ooh. 
<laughs> so, if a glass cannon is something that does a lot of damage, okay. but doesn't have a lot of health, what is something that does a lot of damage and has a lot of health? Because that's what I'm building. Didn't I do this? Or did I, I spent it on something. I still don't have enough. Just OP. <laughs> it's called broken. <laughs> Wait, no, I consolidated tribute. So why can't I afford it? I spent two Iker on something? I did... Yeah, there's the 4-9. Why am I sh suddenly short two Iker? I thought I had enough Iker. Let's do that. A brick cannon. <laughs> I exceeded the nine token limit. Where did I exceed the nine token limit? Oh, when I was consolidating? Now, this is why I wanted the extra move point. Only nine on each... Oh! Uh, that's why, yes. Okay, Parmore, that's... Yeah, I made a mistake. I exceeded nine on a single token, so the rest are discarded. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. So that's two victories. Working towards leveling up. Very good. Also, just checking, has everyone leveled up to the highest rank? I mean, how do I see that? Oh, it's at the end. That's fine. So I claim those tiles as well. So this is now three more victories to level up. I could just kill Murmur's Stronghold right now. But I probably should go kill that thing first, right? It's a free victory. Oh, it hasn't even been able to heal up because... I could get that Palace of Gluttony now. It hasn't even been able to heal up because there's no place of power down there. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking over at chat. Uh, Sips, thank you so much for the raid. Hello, everyone. Um, Dowie, hello. Uh, you said hi to me the other day, Dowie. <laughs> what was Sips playing? Was it farming today? Because I always tune in for Sips's farming streams and just leave it in the background. <laughs> That's why. And then Sips complains about back problems, and I'm like, I had, I had back problems for like three years as well. Project Zomboid. Oh, was Sips farming in Project Zomboid? What was it? Farming the dead? Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Um, I'm streaming Solium Infernum. Now, this this is a sponsored stream, just so you know. But um, Solium Infernum just released. It is a good game. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, if you don't know who I am, well, it's okay. You can get to know me or if not. It's up to you. Um, I'm currently dominating the AI, which is not quite as glorious as it really sounds, but I'm dominating very hard, which is good, because I've I've learned a lot about this game, and there's just so much to learn. Uh, it's not quite as complicated as something like Crusader Kings 3, but uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty complex. Uh, demand received from you. You know what? Sure. Have... Wait, I need, yeah, yeah, have these useless tokens. Leave me alone. I'm about to kill this guy called Murmur. Now, 
Chat is going a lot faster than I'm used to, so I'm I'm trying to keep up. You love my Elder Scrolls videos, Valerie? Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Uh, what am I doing? I'm going to powers. I'm leveling up this power so I can get a fourth order slot to do even more stuff. And seek more tribute. No farming yet, hasn't made that, that far. Ah, okay. I, I've, I've seen, I've watched quite a lot of Project Zomboid. Um, and it does take a long time to like get to, get to uh, things. <laughs> Remember to plot sometimes? I did two plots and I actually pulled it off. <laughs> I've got my glass cannon unit as you know, this, this game sort of leads you to having glass cannons, which become quite easy to kill. Because there's a lot of events that kill a second unit you have. And generally, you don't have more than two, maybe three units, right? So, you, you tend to have one or two units. And one is going to be more powerful than the other. And a lot of events kill one of your units. So, earlier on, I had like two evenly matched units, evenly powerful units. And then a giant angel showed up and blew up the one I wanted to keep. <laughs> because it always picks the one you want to keep, right? Somehow it knows. And, uh, well, then I, I'm left with one, and then, well, everything's sort of riding on that unit. Uh, I am short on that. Let's swap that for that. Demand received from Mamon. Well, see, I worry about receiving demands because they could challenge me to a duel instead of declaring a vendetta. So what I actually need to have is like a spare Praetor around, but I can't afford any Praetor. So I just have to pay him off. I'm currently short on Iker. You like the shawl blanket jumper thing? Yeah, thank you so much. It, it's from Uniqlo. Um, my wife gave it to me. Because it's cold. I can now kill Murma. Oh, this, look how many abilities this unit has. Range plus two, and that's doubled from this artifact. Uh, deafening Throom from this artifact cancels enemies' abilities. Seat of Command. Prayer to at oh, that's a prayer to attribute doubled. Melee Last, which means my stronger infernal plays before the melee phase unwavering can't be converted reformation comes back and can teleport the only problem with this you know oh, as has three movement points the only problem is the hit points are low which i'm hoping to increase at some point is it a poncho it's a shawl because um, a poncho connects at the front and has a hole um this is just a like a two-sided thing like that uh, last game an angel came two turns from the end. You killed it? Uh, <laughs> right at the end you could kill it, right? But like, I, I was not... It came much earlier. I have four order slots now. Wow. More orders than I know what to do with. So in that case, I think I just want tons of money right now. I guess I should plot. Wait, cancel that. Let's do a plot. Go on to play this event no 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 cancels all vendettas demands insults no it's fine okay let's end the turn that's very pretty thank you it's just so thematically appropriate for like four out of five of the games i play <laughs> medieval mm. Ruler of hell, sure. Fantasy world. Yeah. Traveling. Thanks, Greb. Roman Emperor, yeah, that works too. Yeah. So I've now eliminated Murma. You know, I might be able to just eliminate everyone in this game. We, we should try to do that. I'm just going to make a giant monster of a unit 
It's one more victory from leveling up, which I can now. So I could teleport. Or I could walk, but sure. Let's teleport this time. Let's select tribute. We're currently short on this more than anything else. Select tribute. We need... I mean, not those. Uh, let's do that. Anything good? Raise prophecy to level 6. And I'm at prophecy 0. Win two battles with legions benefiting from ongoing wrath rituals. Uh, raise prophecy to level 6. Sure. If I wanted to raise prophecy to level 6... It's gonna take me a while and a lot of money. <laughs> uh, event slot, ritual slot. I, I don't spend a lot of time leveling this stuff up. I tend to be quite single-minded in what I want. So I just see, I want an order slot. And I just go for the closest one for the order slot. But there's a lot in there, like deceit stuff that's like really good, right? Okay, improve prophecy. Is there anything I want to bid on in the bazaar? I wanted a prayer tour. Is there anything? Lithian Phalanx? Malakota Infernal Ranged. Oh, Malakota, right, I remember Malakota. Pretty good prayer tour. I just need. I need to consolidate. So we'll. Don't exceed nine, right? So I want. Uh, Ghosty boys and water droplets. Ghosts and water droplets. Are there these coins which are... None of these coins are ghost and water. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit weird but sure let's consolidate that first malakota infernal plus three range plus two if i attach that to this unit i have the artifact that doubles the stats given by praetor and it'll just remove melee last which is not that important and then i'll have eligos as a spare praetor yeah I'm going to capture this Palace of Gluttony, which is now easy to capture, and that will also promote my unit, hopefully for extra hit points. And then while I'm down here, who's closest? Marmon. Oh, if I kill Marmon, he'll stop sending me his weird deal. Seek tribute. I'm going to need a lot of tribute if I want to... Uh, You don't know what kind of victory condition you choose, but there's not enough time to get it to 6. Right, I set it to 50 turns, right? <laughs> I'm gonna need so much money. I could capture Pandemonium and delay the victory, right? That's something I could do. Regent, paperwork restructure, a random archfiend must pay bribe or tribute. No, good to have that one on hand. Power upgraded sanctum, right? Like getting to... Wait, no, I should focus on... This game is all about priority. So in the back room, there's Malakoda. I want this. Yeah, overpay a little bit, that's fine. And then if I go to Sanctum Powers, can I still afford to upgrade my Prophecy? Yes. I should grab more Tribute and also make sure I go capture the Palace of Gluttony. Is that the last place of power on the map? And I will own 100% of the places of power on the map outside of pandemonium itself which i am actually powerful enough to take at this point i 
I can't remember the actual effects of capturing pandemonium. Uh, where's the place of power, Archfiend's Legions? Rules. Um, victory conditions. Triumph of the Abyss, Tyranny of the Usurper. Takes the city of pandemonium and holds it against all corners. How long do you have to hold it? An Archfiend who captures Pandemonium becomes the Usurper, must hold the city for five turns. Your rival Archfiends will be united in their desire to unseat you, since they can either restore the Conclave and gain a prestige bonus or become the Usurper themselves. Pandemonium's patience grows weaker with each subsequent Usurper, lowering the number of total turns required to win by one. So five to four for the second Usurper. Okay, yes. So timing can be far more effective than brute strength. Despite all this, if you hold pandemonium for the required number of turns, you win. For the next hundred thousand years, even archfiends will fear to speak your name except in mutinous whispers. So I can just capture pandemonium and win if I hold it for five turns? I haven't done a pandemonium victory. But also, everyone could cast offensive spells on me, so I gotta make sure this unit has enough hit points. They could also come attack my other stuff, so it's actually really hard to do that. But if they attack my other stuff, they're not coming to take pandemonium back from me. I could try it. We'll learn something if it doesn't work. But I really need this unit to have more hit points. I now own all the po places of power outside of Pandemonium and Strongholds. And I even hold one Stronghold. I mean, I'd win an election victory anyway, but I've done that before. Suffered a loss of one point in a random power. I lost Wrath. That's my order slot. <laughs> well, I got this now. Tribute quality plus one. Oh, nice. Marmon. Check that. Okay, so I lost an order slot from that because that was so expensive as well. well I can keep pushing up Prophecy. Also... Did I get that Praetor? Malakoda. Let's attach this to... Uh... Oh, I have to remove this first, I think. Transfer this prayer tour to... I guess my stronghold, right? Wait, no. I gotta make my way through. If I attack Pandemonium, I just have to hold it for... Because I can teleport over. Should I do that? <laughs> Wait, didn't this level up? This did level up. Health, please health. Plus seven maximum HP. Yes, that's what I need. Oh, it's going to take time to heal? Okay, promote. Okay, we got to wait then. Does it heal double if it's next to two places of power? Because also, this was... No, what, which one was it? One of these increased the speed of healing. Oh, I have that. It's Overlord. Okay. 
All right. Then I just need more money for things. Enter. All right. We're, we're approaching victory. I've set it to a 50 turn limit, but it takes a little longer than that. At turn 50, the game starts ending, and then it can take between 5 and 13 turns from there. So it's actually going to be 55 to about 60. But if I just capture Pandemonium, I just have to hold it for five turns and I win. Which is a silly thing to do considering the lead we have, but it's a fun thing to do. Wow, it almost went to full hit points. I gained six hit points in one turn. Right, our range is low. Let's transfer prayer to Malakoda. That's going to give us... Plus six infernal, plus four range. It's going to make our infernal... 23. <laughs> and we, we won't even take it... Uh, plus four range. Yeah, we won't even take damage from Pandemonium, but we, will, we won't be dealing that much damage either. We will only deal... Oh, we can only deal one damage per turn? Damn it. Our unit is only as strong as Pandemonium. Maybe there's more manuscripts. No. I'm not strong enough to kill Pandemonium. A tribute. Okay, well. Don't think I. I mean, I. I. Ugh. You know, instead of doing that, what I probably should do is. deal with, like, attack Mamon, I guess? Nine victories to level up. Yeah, that's not happening. Like, if I wanted to kill everyone, I would need the crown that um, allows. Let's do melee. Vampiric reaping. You know, that's a good one to have. I'm just gonna grab it. It's better than uh, drums of woe. It'll give us two more melee. Yeah, I'm not strong enough to attack Pandemonium. I will actually eventually take it with that new artifact, but I'll be dealing three damage per turn. It'll take so long to kill it, even. Because I don't think I have... I've not... I don't really have any proper spells. I need 699. Uh, we'll get to that. Attach Praetor, get the Great Scythe, Consolidate Tribute. Turn 47. Demand received from Andromalius. Gonna reject your demand. So we might go to war with Andromalius. Where is Andromalius? Here. So that's actually on the other side. If we go to war with Andromalius, where would they be hitting me from? This side? Oh, it's actually quite... Is this? Oh, this is Andromalius' stuff. 
Okay, so I should actually get in position for that. Let's teleport over. If we go to war with Andromalius, I'm gonna hit him right here. And the regent. The cost of all rituals is increased. Yeah, that's actually good. Auction one, great scythe, very nice. So I actually want to return the drums of woe to my vault. Get more money. Let's go to... I can now... Oh, no order slots available. Hey, fine, oh it's fine. End turn. Oh, is Andromalia's positioning for war? Oh, they're at war. Marmon and Andromalia's are fighting. I'm teleporting over. Oh, they can claim that tile, right? Yeah. They've been staring at that tile for so long. Good. Demand rejected. Yep, understood. So this is their territory, right? So I can't do anything there. If I check... Can I do this now? There we go. This will get me my order slot back. And then we should just get... Since we're just waiting... Bizarre. Is there any... Like, I need more ma- if I want to capture Pandemonium, I'd need more manuscripts to give more power. Right now, the manuscripts I've got, not great. I mean, Sorceress training, increased legions, infernal attribute, that might actually be handy. So let's just try Seek Manuscript. Chance to match. Oh, so I should actually Seek Manuscript first, and maybe I'll get Sorceress training, but I'll probably get Swamp training, knowing my luck. Okay. We'll see what Andromalius does, whether they'll claim a vendetta or something. This battle's happening here. Oh, close fight. They take two damage, they'll deal three damage, then they'll deal another three damage. Both units will survive, but weakened. Oh, that's, I think the vendettas acclaim cantons. Why walk there? Oh, they claimed the canton here as well. I think they've already claimed three cantons. I don't know exactly what it is though. It's turn 50 though. Trial of the Throne is going to happen. I'm well in the lead, so I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna win. But it just depends what happens here. Defend yourself against Andromalius. Capture territory. Three of mine in seven turns. But since we're at war... I should just walk over, right? So, they need to capture my territory. But a bit hard to do that. When they're at war with Mamon. Collector of artifacts. Defeated opponents' artifacts are salvaged to the vault. Oh. So they can't get to my territory because they're fighting Marmon. And if they stop fighting Marmon, then... 
They also can't get to my territory because they can't walk through Marmon. This is a very weird war they're declaring. Uh, swamp training. Sorceress training, that's what I need. Uh, yes, I want all of this and that. Okay, so then I actually want to go to my manuscripts. Sorceress training. Invoke it on my unit here. 23. Wait, why do we have 23 Inferno? Can I kill Pandemonium? I can kill Pandemonium. Because I'm going to get even... Oh, because I hadn't attached the Malakoda. And I haven't attached the Great Scythe either. I can totally kill Pandemonium. This unit's gonna be so powerful. Okay, I'll see how powerful it is next turn. And then... And then... Oh, I got my order slot back as well. So yeah, let's... Wait. Don't suppose I have enough. I do. Oh, gotta consolidate again. So we're looking for 7, 10, 10. So we just need to... Uh, fire and moon. So we can combine that. Fire, moon, ghost is what I'm looking for. So just not the water droplets. Uh, yes, good. Very nice. Looking for... Yeah. Consolidate that. Sure. Enter. So I'm just walking up to, like, threaten Andromalius, but then I might just go kill Pandemonium. <laughs> Oh, Andromalis is next to these tiles. Damn it. So the assembly of the Conclave has begun. This is where they vote for the one with the most prestige. Okay, so they can't... I forgot. These units are here. I'm not in a position to fight that. Okay, well, how powerful are you? 11, 16, 28. So I'll deal. Eleven, twelve, 13. Is it 14 damage? 3 plus 11. 14 damage per turn. I can take Pandemonium in two turns. Cost of rituals for all archfiends is increased. So I want to do that. So it's less likely people cast spells on me. So I definitely want to play that. I can go ahead. Really? I, I still can't. What do I need? Five, four, basically. Do I even have five fire? Oh, that's why. Okay, let's not do that. That's too complicated. Okay. Sorceress training. Uh, vendetta continues. So Andromalius might win this war. Which they'll they'll get... Um, I mean, they, they have permission to capture... Where is it? A place of power. 069. Oh, they can't. It'll take forever. They have to walk down here and capture my cantons, which they could do. I can't really just... 
melee plus three, range plus two. You know what? Let's get Gushian. Yeah, I'm gonna focus on this. Because it will help me protect any place of power. And then... Do I just attack Pandemonium? So I'm 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 understanding. I'm, I I just want to double check the encyclopedia. Where is it? Encyclopedia. Victory conditions under rules. Uh, tyranny of the usurper. So it is correct, right? I capture it and I hold it for five turns. Uh huh. An archer who captures Pandemonium becomes the usurper. Must hold the city for five turns. Your rival archfiends will be united in their desire to unseat you. They can either restore the conclave and gain a prestige bonus or become the usurper themselves. Pandemonium's patience grows weaker, so I just have to hold it for five turns. So everyone's going to come attack me. I have to march around killing as much as I can. Okay, let's try it. I'll attack from the bottom, so I can respond in various directions. You can seize and hold pandemonium, pandemonium to win by force, but attempting to do so will result in excommunication whether or not you are successful. You can also liberate it. Okay. Seize. <laughs> uh... Play profane disruptions, which means it'll be more costly to cast spells as well. Um, is there any spell I want to be casting? Heals two to four hit points. Increases your deceit resistance. I mean, I assume people are going to be doing all sorts to me. Also, wait, I didn't see. There's actually Enfeeble, Infernal Negotiations. I actually have more spells here. Elocution, Convert Tribute, Witness the Martyr. No, okay. That should be good. That should be good. We're now attacking Pandemonium and breaking all the laws of hell. Let's see what happens. I've I've never tried this. I've never tried this. We're actually about to win anyway. So this is gonna they're they're gonna win this war versus me, which is fine. I've got bigger fish to fry. The throne of hell. Let's watch it. So we tie on ranged. My unit is as powerful as Pandemonium on the range thing. We deal three damage in melee. And then we do 11 in Infernal. Look at all the buffs my enslaved of Ursabet have. I think it got stuck on that animation. Okay, so that's actually good. Excommunicated. Profane disruptions, that's what I played. Cost of rituals have been increased for all archfiends. In fury and glory, the Conclave vaguely remembers a time long ago when great armies clashed and soldiers died in their thousands. While they're reminiscing last, they will reward feats of combat with threefold prestige. Okay, I was worried about it was something else. Pandemonium's down to 10 health. Seize it. Rituals. We have an ongoing ritual that needs maintenance. Okay. Oh, I, you know what? Yeah, maintain it. 
excommunicated. Yep, I dared to violate the natural order of things. But also, why didn't um, why didn't Andromalius take more of my territory? Diplomacy interrupted. Your current diplomatic actions have been cancelled. Oh, because I'm excommunicated, all current diplomatic stuff is cancelled. So the war with Andromalius was cancelled. I also got Gusha, which I will attach to here. And also, do I have an Eligos? Let's attach Eligos to here. Wait, no. Eligos is in here. Okay. So Murmur's Stronghold will get a Praetor as well. Just make that a little stronger. So, okay. So once I capture Pandemonium, everyone will be at war with me. Because I'm excommunicated, even bad things happening to me, like ongoing wars, they're just cancelled because I'm no longer part of the diplomatic table. Okay. Let's get more money. I don't exactly need swamp training, do I? Hey, cold cards. In terms of places of power, do I need... I get 15 prestige per turn from that. Okay. Alright, let's end turn. Let's capture Pandemonium. <laughs> okay, wait, no. I guess because I'm excommunicated... Yeah, all rules are, are th thrown out of the window. So now they can just walk through my territory. My territory is now con considered neutral land. Because my territory is no longer recognized. Okay. I think there is a bug on the melee phase when attacking Pandemonium here. Because it's not processing. That's fine. So now everyone will be turning to come kill me. Because when you're at war, you can only take one... You only capture the, the canton you're standing on. You can't just walk through someone's territory and capture all their cantons, right? Pandemonium seized. Your legion, enslaved of Ursabet, has violated the neutrality of Pandemonium. For this act, you have been excommunicated from the Infernal Conclave. Every great house of hell now stands against you. You must hold Pandemonium for five turns to seize the throne as a usurper. Okay. So I win on turn 58 if I can keep hold of Pandemonium. Mama never even ranked up. Okay, let's have a look at Pandemonium. It's got four hit points. So I have to see who's coming at me from which direction. Also, because I'm excommunicated, I can actually just attack anyone I like for whatever reason. Okay, so, yeah, five turns, right? Oh, I can add things to Pandemonium? I can put Gushian in here? To make Pandemonium even stronger? Oh, okay. Can you have multiple Praetors in here? Can I put Eligos in there? Yeah. I don't know if that's required, because I don't think anyone... I don't need to do that. No one else has enough power to beat those stats. Let's... Let's, let's just take two steps. No, let's just take one step. Actually, let's see. Okay. If they move up to there, I might be able to... No, no, don't teleport there. I might be able to... Do this, this, then this. So if they move up, I could kill them and move back to Pandemonium. Rituals, right. 
this I also want to maintain. Because it's my defense. I want to seek tribute. Yes. Uh, probably just seek lots of tribute. Because I don't think there's much else to do. I just need lots of money to maintain my spell. Buy things if something comes up. So is everyone united now? Do, do their wars stop? Look at them. They're just walking through my stuff. They're gonna take my Tower of Pride. <laughs> okay, well, they can try, I suppose. Oh, no. They will take it in two... No, they'll take it in three turns. Unless I can increase the stats in the Tower of Pride. Okay. I mean, they can try to take my stuff, but I'm gonna hold Pandemonium. So I'm assuming they're walking down here. So I'll... Oh, they didn't go to where I thought they would. But also, since I'm excommunicated, corrupt tribute, resisted... I'm thinking. I'm excommunicated. I don't have to follow the rules anymore. Does that mean I can... I've been told multiple times recently that I have a Dark Souls laugh. Is that true? Uh, it's Tower of Pride. Is Gushin right now? In Murmur's stronghold? They can't come kill me if they're dead. Alright, they got another hit off on that. Yeah, Marmon's moving stuff around. They're moving down. Okay. Everyone's making moves, but they can't they're not strong enough to take Am I just gonna kill Andromalius right here? I have a brick cannon, is what we've decided to call my unit. Not a glass cannon, a brick cannon. Does, you, does that just eliminate Andromalius? Yeah, they're taking my territory. Yeah, that's... Understood. Corrupt tribute? Ritual resisted. Andromalus. So Mammon's the last one left. I can just go kill Mammon. Do I win by killing everyone, or do I win by holding pandemonium? I will rule over an empty hell. That also stops Andromalias from taking 
my Tower of Pride. How strong is this? 908? Because that means if I take Mammon's Stronghold, I will hold everything, right? Nine zero eight. He will take this. Could I take it back? Combat stratagems. Nine zero eight is pretty powerful. Nine. Six zero eight. Wait, no. He's only got five hit points. There are combat stratagems. But the melee phase will kill him. Nine deals six. He'll have eight. Okay, I'll take a, a chance here. But also if I go to... I can't access the bazaar when I'm excommunicated. Right. Okay. I'm just going to put the 10,000 scre 10,000 screaming bastards next to the Tower of Pride. Uh if he takes that, that's going to be very annoying because I I want to own everything on the board and I can't kill him next turn. But if he doesn't take it... Can you even get units now? No, I can't buy any more units. I'm, I'm not allowed to trade. What is he going for? Okay, then my 10,000 Screaming Bastards will move next to the Tower of Pride, which buffs its stats a little bit. I don't know why everyone's going for the Tower of Pride specifically. Oh, he didn't attack because he doesn't have a stratagem to not play melee. What's the objective now? I could kill him right now and win by domination. Well, sure. Electrocute the 10,000 screaming bastards. Who's regent? Is it me? Or do I always go last? Like how how does being who goes first when you're excommunicated? I'm not even told. I've got nothing to do with all this tribute. I can maintain my ritual. <laughs> so this will have a 10 okay Two five three. Two five three. Five five three. Five five three. I mean I don't think any of these units can take it in one turn. So if I just kill Mamon, I will then own every point on the map, right? Every stronghold, including yeah. Pandemonium, every place of power. It's as if 10,000 people stopped screaming at once. <laughs> A great disturbance in hell. The 10,000 screaming bastards wiped out from existence. Right? I, I own every place of power, right? If I look at place of power, 11, it says 11 controlled. Does that include pandemonium, right? And the strongholds. So it's a total of 12 places of power. As far as I can tell, right? There's nothing else. Like Unholy Fountain, Tower of Pride, 
pa uh, palace of gluttony, murmur stronghold, face in the sand, garden of infernal desires, altar of abomination, tree of woe. This volcano is not a place. Pandemonium decides the region, so maybe there, it just isn't one now. I mean, someone has to move first. And I will own every stronghold, including Murmur's stronghold, Andromalius' stronghold, and Marmon's stronghold. Right? Now, I want to save the game here. Own everything. Because... I want to make sure I get this right. It's my understanding none of these units can take this in one turn by themselves. Because, like, this would have attacked last turn. But also now it'll deal 6 plus... Oh, 6 plus 8. Yeah, it'll still kill it in one turn. But only if melee doesn't play second. Otherwise... We kill it, right? This is 253, this is 553. Five, five, so, as long as this can't take it next turn, we will win with everything. Too much tribute. Uh, oh, they'll just be removed from the vault at. Yeah, okay, accept. Are you hitting it? So I'm, it's my understanding they can't take it. Wait, no, they do take it. Damn. Is there nothing I can do to stop this? Six, five, seven. Right, it's buffed from the surrounding units. I could waltz over there and kill everything. It's just... I, I own Pandemonium, so I might... I wanted to win with everything. Like, I don't know if I have time to walk over there, kill everything, capture, recapture that point, and then come back and kill Mamon's stronghold. I don't think I have time because I own Pandemonium. Pandemonium conquered now belongs to the new tyrant of hell. Oh, that turn! <laughs> I won by holding Pandemonium anyway! <laughs> we'll consider that a game where we own everything. I didn't even have time. It's a usurpation victory. I'll count that as owning everything. <laughs> uh, first among gluttons. Hold the palace of gluttony at the end of the match. Mastermind. Win a vendetta in a single turn. Most completed manuals. Eliminated, eliminated, eliminated. So, it's a, uh, it's weirdly a uh, pandemonium victory, usurpation victory, but everyone else is eliminated. <laughs> this is this is such a weird screen. You won by holding pandemonium. Everyone's dead, because <laughs> I did kill Mamon on that last action. Okay, well, cool. Anyway, that's Solium Infernum. Thank you all so much for joining. And those still hanging around from Sips's raid, thank you so much uh, for just sitting here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that was a good four-hour stream of Solium Infernum. Nice, good, complete game. Completely dominated. If you do want... I mean, this was a sponsored stream, just full transparency. That referral link in chat is just the Steam page. If you do want to have a look at the game, it's worth looking at because there's nothing else really quite like it. So click that link and it'll just bring you to Steam. Thank you so much if you do. 
Uh, otherwise, um, that's going to be it for today. Thank you all so much for joining. There's plenty more on YouTube if you want to go see that stuff. Um, are there sort of campaign lengths? Uh, there is sort of a campaign. It's a set of eight chronicles. You can see it goes from easier to harder. Um, I've played Stations of the Pit on the channel, which is the second mission, I guess. Uh, each one is a different uh, arch fiend with various objectives. Um, one of the biggest things is the multiplayer, though. Um, which you can imagine the AI can only do so much in a game like this. Uh, because, you know, AI in turn-based 4X games, it's impossible to make a good AI. Everyone complains about every civilization AI, every endless legend, um, humankind, old world. The AI always has limitations. So you can imagine a game like this with so much deception and underhanded backstabbings and trickery. Humans can do so much more. So it's got a big multiplayer setup as well. Um, does it have marathon speed? Uh, you can set the number of turns and you can increase the size of the world. So I was on the sm smallest map just now, I think. And you can increase it to 70 or 90 turns, I think. I was on 50. So you can almost double the length and probably triple the size of the map. You know, so it can be much, much bigger. Um, but yeah, that's going to be good. Good, good. Thank you again, everyone, for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to exit out of the game. Quit. Wonder if players could connive to insult and ask for tribute all at once. Then simultaneous vendetta. I mean, you could, yeah. Essentially, that's what I did by attacking Pandemonium. It's just declare war on everyone and everyone declares war on me. And that actually allowed me to just kill everyone immediately. <laughs> Uh, okay. Thank you all for joining. I will now bring this stream to a close. I have to go eat dinner. It's actually a little bit late. I have to go eat dinner. Thank you all for joining. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, all. Bye.